the loop. Ah, good morning. <laughs> All right, here we are. This feels very weird. I don't have headphones on. I'm not hearing music. I don't have uh, annoying stuff going on in the studio around me. It's all very, very different. We're doing something quite experimental this morning, and I'm glad that you could be part of it, especially if you woke up to join us. This is the Gareth Cliff Show on The Real Network, and we are live. We're also the first show, and we've tried to figure out whether there's anyone else. Um, the guys who operate some of this technology that we're using this morning have assured us there isn't. They said, oh, yeah, there, there must be, and then they went and checked and said, oh, fuck, there isn't. It's just you. So this is the first ever live podcast using green screen technology, the Unreal Engine, which is the stuff they used, by the way, in the Mandalorian TV series that Disney produced with uh, Star Wars. So, I mean, some cool stuff going on, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. Big thank you this morning to the team who were pulling serious hours last night. Um, all the producers, Wandile, James, Marvin, these guys know their stuff. Tian, uh, they, I couldn't have done any of this stuff without them. I was lying in bed last night watching a test that they were doing. They were all still like full of energy, and I wanted to fall asleep and die. So well done, gents. Excellent, excellent job around there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and uh, congratulations to uh, Michael Flax, who's married. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> look at him. He's our guest this morning. Leanne Moles here. Yep. Uh, Steve is also running around, checking on everybody, making sure everything's okay. So we've got a full complement of people. Uh, big thanks to you guys for coming through and okay. uh, for not wearing green. Otherwise, you would have melted into the background and it would have looked like you were a floating head. This new well, studio is so sick. It's like cool, right? Proper sick. So we decided uh, instead of messing with anybody and bringing in like a new uh, guest who they didn't know or, or someone that they weren't that familiar with, so we're not going to mess with the audience. We're going to bring in people they already know. So we thought, mm. well, they know you, they know you, Thanks. they know me. So no surprises there. Hi. <laughs> I do like how Flax had to wait for this fancy setup to announce his marriage. I know, you know. I know. He, <laughs> he, 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 it. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad there's no delays last night. <laughs> yeah, you refused to like come and sit here and just talk <laughs> about it in our ordinary old studio or at home on the link. Yeah. I was actually talking to Leanne about this, and we were thinking about how this is about the ninth incarnation of us doing shows together. There was at least, I think there were probably three versions of a studio that we mm. did in radio. One was in the bowels yeah, yeah, of the building. It's like, it like at the bottom of the SABC building with it. I mean, they, they, they went so deep down because they were so terrified of like the blacks coming, you know, in the mm. old apartment. Everything era. was bomb proofed. Yeah. And they had these levels and you would go down several levels and then they had these studios and they had what they called i might have discussed this on the show before um an an anechoic chamber what yep. which is a, yeah it's a room where they have all the sound absorbing uh, material mm -hmm. that you can possibly squeeze into that space if you drop uh, a microphone into the middle of it and you talk it actually all the sound is absorbed almost immediately so you Jeez. you can hear your own heart yeah. beating. You can hear the blood pumping in your ears. It is wild. Anyway, down there in the bowels, mm. we did a version of the show. Then we did one up in the foyer. They redid the studio once or twice. Um, then, of course, we started Cliff Central. And we did a show from there for close on eight years in yep. those studios. And through that, COVID happened. So we learned to do our shows from home, which was wild. And now here we are in about the eighth or ninth incarnation Jeez. with a totally different look and feel. And uh, this is just the beginning. As I said, we've got lots of exciting stuff happening. We've, um, we've bought a, a green suit that covers <laughs> someone from head to toe, right? There's yeah. the, there's oh, the head covering. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, the, like those um, Blue Man group used to wear. Yeah. You remember them? That, mm -hmm. I never watched it. That's it. That's it. So those guys would wear that stuff, but we've got a suit like that. So you could, you literally go, oh, do you want a, did you want a coffee? And they'll br it'll float in. <laughs> <laughs> like you won't even know that there's a person. <laughs> it's fantastic. Okay. So uh, some people are saying turn up the volume there. So apparently our, uh, we're still, listen, you know, this audience is so ungrateful. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something. I, do you know what time we all woke up to be here for you this morning? Do you know how much effort and money has been spent to make this show uh, available to you this morning for free? Complain about the sound. 
How very dare you. How very, very, very dare. Very dare you. All right. Well, we've got Mig saying toilet humor on the green screen in the near future. Oh, absolutely. 100% yes. You know how much we love a bit of toilet humor mm. on this show. Are people still going to the same place to watch this? Still on YouTube? Yeah. Yes, yes. And All comments there. there. Mm -hmm. I sick. So we've given everybody a chance to, uh, to kind of figure out what we're doing. And I, I didn't want to make a big fuss of this morning, which is why I didn't throw forward to it last week. I didn't say, oh, it's going to be amazing, because what if it wasn't? You know, that's always my yeah. worst fear. Mm. <laughs> you tell people, oh, no, you've got to come and check out what we're going to be doing on Monday. It's going to be fantastic. And then they get here and they're like, really? And you're in this little tin box of puppets going, hello, <laughs> morning. What do green. you say? <laughs> I say it's a good morning. I say it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Uh, can someone cue the horns on Garrett's head? Uh, yeah, those are coming too. Uh, Don't worry. <laughs> Do you know what we've ordered? Yeah. Because I'm, I mean, like I'm just having so much fun with this, and everybody on the team is too. We've ordered one of those horse head masks. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> You know, those, those like really ridiculously, obviously fake ones. Yes. I'm going to have some of our guests wear those mystery guests and all the rest of it. It's like that uh, mask singer. singer. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and I, now, I mean, with the green screen here, you wouldn't know. I could, I could have like a fake Joe Biden or Donald Trump. Yeah. You know? Oh, we're going to fake news it. No, yeah, we could do, do all like of a that. full interview and the guest is only revealed at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is this is the way it's going to be uh, going from now on. Obviously, we're going to change quite a lot as we go, but you get to see first view of what's new, and uh, we really are breaking new ground, making history, the way that it is meant to be, pioneering podcasting, changing the way that we do content in South Africa, and now this, and there's so much more. I can't begin. Mm. I can't begin to tell you because we'll be here all day. Who has the time? Um, so Flax got married. Yeah, geez, I've um, come a long way on every <laughs> studio you've had. <laughs> this so is the marriage studio. So let's just uh, let's just fill people in because they might not. There might be new people watching us this morning live, uh, who've never ever seen or heard your story before. Flax used to be a producer on the show. In fact. Uh, we didn't know who he was for a long time. Remember, he was kind of lurking around. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't. With, I was never uh, formally introduced. Well, Aria Kelman brought him in as like an assistant, and he was trying to learn stuff about how to, you know, do shows or whatever. And uh, I mean, you were like what, all of twenty years old? Yeah, I was very young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I, you're so it's like old. First year of varsity. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, he came in and he was just like lurking around. None of us really knew what he was there to do. No. And after a, only after a month. Someone asked, like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> Very true. And, and then he's like, oh, I'm, I'm Michael Flax. Um, no, he said my name is Markle. Ma Ma Markle. No, he said a Mark. Mark. Mark, oh, Mark, Mark. Flax. <laughs> anyway, look at you, how you've grown up, got married. I was yeah. very much an unplanned intern in those days. Dude, I, I, but everything since then has been so planned. Yeah. You know, he was on the show with me when he said, I've decided I'm going to get married. I mean, that yeah. wasn't when you And I mean, decided. that was a huge change because he was out dawdling yeah. and Very true. lots yeah. of stories. I mean, you know, the, 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 the Joburg nightlife's never recovered since no. Max has pulled out of it. <laughs> no. But um, yeah, very, very much uh, a different and, and new exciting chapter for you. And you and your wife got married last month. Yeah, 3rd of March. And I heard your speech went, I just want to say to my wife, you my laugh. Is that right? <laughs> no, no, no. No? <laughs> Is that not your very, speech? What I did for the speech was I sat I just sat one day and I just basically poured out my heart on a piece of paper. Oh. It was like I went really deep. Because end of the day, like at your wedding is That's just the moment. it's people you know. Like it's just like a closed group of people that really care about you and people that you care about. So you can go deep, you can get personal. Mm. And yeah, I just was like, this is you only get one wedding speech. You only get one wedding. So I thought, let me just go all out. And yeah, people loved the speech. I, I got very emotional during the speech. I'm sure. But I said everything I wanted to say. It was a proper, everything that could go wrong went right. Oh, it was like one of those days where you didn't wow. even notice any So the opposite of Leanne's three marriages. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's one and a half, really. But no, um, I, I also had a very perfect wedding my first time. Um, and yeah, there was absolutely nothing that went wrong except somebody didn't get paid because the uh, uh, best man got drunk and we found <laughs> a check the next morning that had been stomped on a thousand times. Oh. Uh, yeah, but that was it really. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, last time we spoke, 
I was educating you on um, electric toothbrushes, and now you're married. Now somebody <laughs> else gets to do that. I know. And um, you know what else is cool is the our most popular video is still by miles. Can you guess? Dominatrix. 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 Can't even say it properly, <laughs> but yeah, the Dominatrix. <laughs> Flax getting beaten by a, nom- a dominatrix, and you can go and see the video. It's still our most popular one. It's <laughs> well on its way to like a million views or something. I checked like a couple months ago. People are still commenting like to this day. It's incredible. Like fresh comments. No, it's there. It's insane. Yeah. What, is your, what it's does great. your wife think about all that? I listen. I, yeah, but uh, that bull whistle name is stuck in both our heads. The bull whistle. <laughs> that was that punisher. Bull, no, bull's <laughs> pizzle. Bull's pizzle. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what a pizzle is? It, it's a, a penis, isn't it's it? It's a dried up. So they, in the old days, a pizzle was a dried-up bull's penis okay. that they would use as um, as a whip or as a, a, a some some sort of brandishing tool or whatever. But a, just the word pizzle. <laughs> it's yes. what you would use to to really insult a man. So great. You, you seem a, to have a, a small pizzle. Mm. Oh. Look at your pizzle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you've used that on a couple of people. <laughs> I, 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 could, miserable I could have. I've missed out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, loads of things to get to this morning. We're going to check in on some news. We're going to find out what's going on in the sport. Uh, we're going to bring in producer James, whose sport has not improved, even though the, the set in the studio. No, have. don't expect anything more. Expect nothing from him. His sport is still going to be rubbish. But uh, very exciting comments here. Lots of people saying, are you guys actually sitting together or are you in different locations? Oh, you see, you'll never know. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. Because the fun thing now is like I could be doing this from my bed. I just have to make sure that the bed clothes are under here. In, and from then, nipples down. <laughs> yeah, and I just have to have a backdrop that's green and everything will be perfect, right? Yeah, it's possible. I'm um, yeah. AR generated over here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm in <good>. bloom. <laughs> Um, yeah, Leanne, what are you doing in Bloom? I just <laughs> wanted to test out this. this really works. So there's Deshni who's listening to us from Vienna, Austria this week. Needed my South African fix. Love the new studio. Scholar today. White House tomorrow. Just vibes all around. Congrats. Well, that's a lot. Have you guys seen that new AR thing that got planted on us on WhatsApp? You want to tell I'm me? thoroughly. Oh, yeah, yeah. The little you, the at the top. Thing. Yeah. It's proper cool. Mm. Do you Wait. use it? Yes. Why don't what I know you about used, this? Tell me what you used it for. So if like you've got your WhatsApp. weird thing. Yes. Go to your WhatsApp. And uh, just open it up, right? And then at the top, you'll see where you search usually. Mm-hmm. Put in a search thing there, and it should come up with like. It, How do you it not gives have you the it? actual? She probably hasn't updated her oh. software. <laughs> you don't have she, it. Leanna hasn't updated her software like that. since like the 1990s. In I fact, I her still phone use, still I thinks s- it's a Nokia 3310. I still Over use here. IRC. So you're going to see all the weird things that I search for. Like you can make AR generated things on your screen. Um, By the way, this is like going to a dinner party where two people are showing each other shit on their phone and you're not involved. <laughs> now I don't know how it works. And you're like, what is this? But this anyway, is dreary. Okay, well. you, you can ask it to do things for you. Like, oh, there, I did an airplane on a hippo. And then it will oh, make like a picture. The journey, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you say literally Draws put an up. airplane on a hippo and it will send you back a photo of an airplane on a hippo. So that's very <laughs> useful, obviously, because I mean, a lot of people want airplanes with uh, hippos on them. <laughs> you got to test its versa. limits. <laughs> Oh my god. But you can be like, give me a recipe that I can make in thirty minutes for like a, a Coca Cola chicken. But and you then can do can that make... on Google. True. Yes, but this is now on WhatsApp, Leanne, and what we want is more everywhere all the time. They're gonna start charging us, aren't they? Yeah, this look already if you want to use the um the the advanced and, and up to date versions of you know, chat GPT or whatever, you have to pay for them. Mm. So there's the there's the public one, but it gives you very rudimentary stuff. And a lot of people are using that now to write essays for varsity or to to I do use their, it every day in work. Same. No. I think it's genius. It is uh, no, next it is. level. It is, game but, changer. Not, but you can also tell if someone's using it because mm. it's so generic. No, hundred percent. But you can ask it to version, not be generic. Uh, the paid version's so much better. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Anyway, some people are saying it's very, very cool that we don't have to wear um headphones because that you know now they can see how truly enormous our ears are (laughs) (laughs) and deformed we all actually you didn't know but i was hiding a pair of uh drikas ears (laughs) all this time um there are lots of cool comments you could drop us those if you haven't already subscribed then please do it 
Um, I'm not going to bother you the whole way through the show trying to get you to like and subscribe, but you know it helps. And we've got algorithms working in the background. That's how everything works in media these days, so don't make me ask you twice. <laughs> All right, I love the new setup, says Jane. Helen says this AI stuff is naff. Okay, well, Helen, that makes you sound a thousand years old. Just mm. saying, okay. Leanne is still on Mixit. Is this true? Is this a... <laughs> I, I actually Googled the other day if Mixit was still in existence. I <laughs> Why, did. do you want to go Is check it? out your old logins? <laughs> <laughs> Look, no, watch Leanne not, end up with so. thousands of messages from people who <laughs> are still on Mixit. It's, it's, it was quite recently defunct, though. Really? Yeah. Jeez. It was there for a while. It worked. But we were Mark. talking about IRC chat and, yeah, man, how do, things what do you use? What do you use this AI stuff for? Um, I use, in day-to-day -day work, I use ChatGPT. I love it. Um, I was using it last night. Or to night. summarize things. And like you could type out an email and I would say just make this clearer or <laughs> better to understand or in point form. Oh, really? Because people send you gum garbled and jumbled. I said jobbled. Jobbled and gumbled. <laughs> garbled and jumbled emails. And then you, you, you think, oh, well, I'm not even going to touch this. Just put it straight into chat. GPT. Summarize things or someone could say, I need hmm. this. Uh, give me a breakdown of this. And you literally just copy paste in chat GPT and say, exactly what you yeah. need as long as you can tell jet uh, chat gpt precisely what you want like it's all in the communication to the system so there, there are courses now for that um true put inputting the information good so you would say act as a social media manager right and blah 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 or act as a copywriter Very and then cool. you would need to put in things like no jargon um you know uh, not not machine like language, human language. You can put those terms in, and it really helps. But also for for hmm. bigger concepts, um, I, my boss put his head out the one door the, out the door the one day and said, "We need an AI concept for a fragrance launch in a store, and we need like a an AI game, a conceptual game for them to play." Yeah. Put that into ChatGPT. Put in a couple of keywords, and it comes up with fragrance. It? Comes up with the games, the actual games, where you can buy them, how you download mm. them. Maybe this is the gap that uh, former producer Damon Calvary has been waiting for, for his fragrance business. This is going to lift it right off the ground. <laughs> right off the ground. This is his moment to shine. Uh, he, he got a special uh, deserved mention this morning. A funnier picture came up of you and me and Mabale at some like event mm. 12 years ago. Oh. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously we look very old by comparison. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, uh, Tabo says, oh, look, here are the women and men in black. Yes. Yeah. That's that it, That wasn't Tabo. even planned. Yeah. I was it. just told don't wear green. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I did also see a nice comment about uh, ass, you look gorgeous. I'm I not was sure hoping. if that means you look gorgeous or our asses look gorgeous because I don't know how you can see our asses when we're sitting <laughs> no, at the desk. No, it's me. It's definitely me. It's definitely all yeah. you, yeah. Thank you. All right, do you want to look at uh, some of the stuff that's going on? People don't want to just hear us talk nonsense all morning. Um, so, Flax, you worked for them for a little while, but the U.S. House of Representatives, that's not who you worked for. But <laughs> wow, Flax. <laughs> <Flex. laughs> no, listen, I mean, uh, Marjorie Taylor, Taylor Green does, and she's not very intelligent, but Flax, you you could probably get in there if she can. Can you guys put right? me in the Senate right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> can you imagine if Flax ended up being President of the United States? By the way, remind me to tell you about a fascinating dinner I had on Saturday night in Cape Town. I heard something amazing about what could happen in the U.S. elections. Just remind me. Okay. Anyway, we're talking about the U.S. Re House of Representatives. They approved a bill on Saturday that will force the wildly popular social network TikTok to divest from its Chinese parent company or be shut out of the American <sighs> market. Mm. Oh, no. this is so annoying. So both of you are involved in this. That's why I think it's a good one for us to talk a little bit about this morning. I mean, I hate TikTok. I, I, I know we're on there now, so... No. But I mean, it's just not, it's not something I don't care. I don't have an account. I'm not interested. I know that's where a lot of people are getting their stuff and good for you. But you're also being given and force fed and uh, selected for brainwashing and stupid nonsense. Uh, whereas, you know, the kids in China are not allowed to watch anything but educational and, and uplifting stuff. Meanwhile, in the Western world, people are watching like completely stupid people do dance moves. Um, but I know you worked for them for a little while. Yeah, we uh, did their reseller ads for them. I mean, I love the app. I think it is very addictive. Their algorithms are phenomenal. So they like feed you exactly what you want, which makes it addictive. Mm -hmm. And the content, I love 
uh, first party content. Like I would rather watch mm. YouTube over Netflix any day. Sure. Yeah. So I really, I, li I like the app. It's one of the apps that I do have. I've started deleting apps. Um, it's like anything I spend a lot of time on. I just want to have like one or two apps I use a day, not mm. like four or five social apps. Um, I actually heard this news yesterday while I was in spa, but they didn't give a breakdown of why. And I just assumed it had something to do with the uh, China spying China. or something like that. It's yeah. China. Is that it? China. It's basically China. No, so they're, they're worried because obviously there are, there are security uh, issues here. I mean, you've got a, a, a Chinese company that's owned by the Chinese Communist Party, the government, mm -hmm. right? They're the major shareholder. In all, I don't even know if there are other shareholders at this point, but they are able to influence that very clever algorithm that you speak yeah. of in order to really uh, get into the minds and hearts and lives and homes of American citizens. Now, this would be, you know, it wouldn't be a big deal with the eyes of a 20-year-old, but with the eyes of someone a little bit older, it's no short, nothing short of, like, spying. Yeah, it is It's dangerous. nothing short of having assets in every market that you're not meant to be in. Mm. It's phenomenal. Because you're collecting data every Exa time someone touches this. And screen. it's massively dangerous. I mean, like, China knows more about what Americans in their 20s and 30s are thinking than America knows about one Chinese person in their 20s and 30s. So what are they going to do with the information then? So let's say, because at uh, the moment... My, Taiwan! <laughs> my, my For You page, uh, <laughs> my, my FIPE... Um, will often come up with, I'm, I'm thinking of American young people's issues in America. Yeah. And something that comes to mind is the whole um, anti-abortion. Mm. Now the fact that you've got to destroy the eggs, that your own eggs that you froze because they're living creatures. And oh, that's such nonsense. So See, you're, being, you're already being manipulated. You think so? Yes, absolutely. This just proves so, my point. So what is China gaining from feeding me, let's say I lived in America, with content that's anti-abortion? It, this is clearly or, or so. So we know that there are two massive issues in this election that are that are coming up in America, and it's it's you know we talk about election interference, but the Democrats' main issue in this election is going to be abortion. They're already saying, oh, the Republicans are trying to prevent women from accessing health care, and they'll destroy your eggs that you've frozen. Exactly this propaganda that you've just come out with, you you've clearly fallen for it. Well, I don't know. I mean, I haven't read into yeah, it because I don't have frozen that's, eggs and I don't live in part, America. That's part of it. The other big issue is obviously immigration. But this is how the Chinese indirectly will affect the U.S. elections. Get the candidate they want. Let me put it to you this way. If China did want to attack Taiwan and take it over, whether militarily or psychologically or figuratively in some way, who would they rather want in charge, Joe Biden or Donald Trump? Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Yeah. So wouldn't they be putting propaganda about abortion in front of young American girls? Mm. Uh, true. See what I mean? I mean this is, this is really not rocket science. If you've got, if you've got the way of getting to them, the, 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 the means to do it, and they trust you because you're on an app that, they, that, that is already delivering the content that, mm. as you both already said, you care about your For You page, all of this stuff, suddenly you've got an in that even those, those kids' parents don't have. That's frightening. So the U.S. House of Representatives is going to vote this week on that. But and we'll see what happens. Then I heard something about they, it could still keep la uh, stay live in America if they changed the company mm. it was housed under. So That's it, yeah. essentially the U.S. Congress is not saying that you need to um, hand it over to us. They can't do that. It's a country that believes in property rights. Mm. It would be completely anathema for them to do that. What they are going to do is they're going to look at ways of, of, of getting the Chinese to divest, the Chinese government to divest from this. Now, whether or not they'll do that, they'll create a bunch of shell companies. Who knows? Are you going to have insight into the financials? Are you actually going to know who you're dealing with? True. It's all very complicated. But it would be a shot across the bows from America to say, look, we're not just going to tolerate you gathering information and selling our people propaganda. It's big for, for America to ban it. I mean, think of Huge. how many people make a living yeah. in America off TikTok alone. Like, that's their full-time job. Yeah, there would be a lot of unemployment. Even companies that do content creation and influencers. Small businesses. Yeah, that's big. It's a big move. Bold move as well.
Carl says uh, in the comments, this will lead back to porn. The Chinese will just learn our favorite types of porn and feed that to us. <coughs> well, we can tell what you're busy thinking about this morning, Carl. <laughs> That's great. Is Flax comfortable around all those books? Be careful not to leave him alone in there. Yeah, I brought some of my own books here. I'm sure you'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very good. Um, algorithms polarize society. A conspiracy theorist will be fed more conspiracies. Well, this is the kind of thing that happens, and everybody knows we're not immune to this. Uh, I don't think there's anyone in the world who doesn't realize that they're being fed stuff they already agree with so that they'll keep coming back. Whether it's on YouTube, TikTok, um, Instagram, Wherever you might be, you're being sold stuff that you already like. That's why they keep on selling it to you, and you keep buying it. So everybody who thinks they're an independent thinker at this point really needs to evaluate that on a daily basis, make sure that you're not a complete moron. Yeah, I mean, it's really not just TikTok. It is everywhere. It is. And, and I mean, TikTok is basically, um, you'll find on Instagram what you find on TikTok. You'll find... Yeah on uh, any kind of news feed thing that you follow, like a, a BuzzFeed or a um, Flipboard or something like that, any curated news feed you'll find on TikTok. Yeah. But the, the thing is, you'll probably see it first. The, um, the comment there from Rachel makes a lot of sense. Like Google doesn't spy on us or WhatsApp. Why do we get ads of the things they say we want? It's so funny. Um, uh, you just have to mention it and, and yeah. that's it. Mm. It hears you. But we look past it when, when it's presented to us. Like, as soon as it happens to us, you're like, oh, that's so weird. I was just talking about it. But then you, you, you're done with it. You leave it the next second later, not actually knowing how dangerous it is that what you yeah. talking about it ended up on your Facebook. Like, you don't actually go in depth on it. I mean, you don't, you don't go to bed worried about it. Exactly. But you should. <laughs> you should. <laughs> what's, the, uh, what's the worst thing you've been advertised that you actually didn't want, but you know that your phone was listening to you, and then you ended up getting like a barrage of ads for this? Because I got baby products once, and I'm like, as far as I know, I don't have any kids. Yeah. As far as I know. And even if I – right now, my phone's probably going, ooh, baby. And Exciting. We'll yeah. send him some more ads. You I, know? I got a weird thing just recently – um, you know those horribly cheap ads where it's just um, like white blocks with a product in each one? Oh. Or it's a part of a product. Oh, like the li – are we talking about TikTok? Um, no, no, no. Just like in, uh, when I'm scrolling around. Oh. And it'll say like 459 Rand. And you look at it and it looks like it could come from a washing machine. <laughs> no idea what it is. I was served one of those <laughs> and it had things in it that looked like multi-sided dildos or something. <laughs> And Who knows what you've been putting like into a, your phone? A, Wait, dual sided. Dual sided, and there was like a weird, um, looked like a bicycle seat that could give you extra pleasure or something like that. So I turned, I turned it around to my, my We're young We're no colleague. longer dual sided. We tri sided now because the bicycle. <laughs> and said, "What is this?" And he looked at it and he said, "Those are parts of a gaming AI of vi visual." <laughs> you thought it was a dildo. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this is this is how old I'm getting. <laughs> but because we'd mentioned AI it's and not got to do games, with age. This is just you're a, you're a <laughs> sick and twisted individual. What can we say? I was being selling parts that you fit to your AI headset, like rubber comfort oh, things. Oh wow! Yeah. Okay, I don't know if I would have. And I'd never Googled anything like that. Should we try and bring James in here? Get in here, James. Do something useful on the show this morning. Let's get him in here to do some sport. We'll get back to your dildos in a minute. <laughs> and there is more. And remind me about that dinner I have to tell you about with the U.S. election. That's quite fun to talk about, too. I get, oh, look at him. He's wheeling in his chair. Just, no, show, show this. Show all of it. I want everybody to see how embarrassing it is that this guy, look at him. What an idiot. How's <laughs> this how is old? great. I can't wait for us to build you your own shitty little producer booth. I'm very excited for it. I'm going to make sure that it is... Right next to the toilets. <laughs> I'm going to make sure that you are using the most primitive equipment we can find. Right, Flex? This is how it starts. You remember. Yeah. This is where it goes. i got to do my 10,000 hours, right? But you could end up being as successful and slick as Michael Flex here one day. That's the dream. That's only the goal. I mean, <laughs> you could dream. end up with a lovely wife. You could end up with a plan, with a career. Those are all the dreams. Success. Right, Flex? Yeah. Just follow his lead. What's it like to have a wife? <laughs> That's amazing. Amazing. <laughs> right. You don't ask anyone that the first month. No. What do you think? He's going to say after the first month, oh, 
You know, we're already having Terrible. arguments about where to put the rubbish. <laughs> you know, uh, the kid keeps us up all night. You think, <laughs> what, after a month? Give the guy a chance. What's it like to have a wife? James, all right, focus on the sport for this morning, if you this can even sports. do that. Right. All right, so listen, what, what we do here, Flax, in case you don't know. Yeah. Uh, on Fridays, Ben does a professional sports mm -hmm. intro. He helps us to figure out, like, what sport we should be watching, because there's so much to choose. Yeah. And what we should be betting on, even. You know, there's a lot of stuff to do. And then, on a Monday, James comes in and tells us what actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes he gets it right, but most often not. Um, all right, so let's look at it. Beyond the scoreboard, the weekend sports recap. Here, along with Superbets, is James, the producer. Sure. So we're going to try everything we can to do well in the football. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll start with the Premier League. Wolves took on Arsenal 2-0. They are now back on the top of the log, which is not the greatest news for Liverpool fans. Uh, Liverpool also won this weekend 3-1. Mm -hmm. um, the title race is getting hotter by the week. City are one game behind now, um, and also one point behind the two league leaders at the moment. So... Um, it's going to heat up as we get closer towards the end of the season. There's about six games or so left to go. Um, so hopefully the boys in red uh, can pull it off. Um, sticking with football, Manchester uh, United actually pulled something quite incredible off yesterday. Uh, they played Coventry in the FA Cup. They were winning uh, that game 3-0. Um, it then didn't go so well for them. Um, you can already hear other people laughing at you. <laughs> yeah, as if good. you're talking about something you don't it's understand. Not good. Um, Coventry <laughs> came back with three goals. Um, so it was 3-3 by the end of the game. And then Man United ended up winning 4-2 on penalties. So hmm. Man United is just the gift that keeps on giving them up. Who's opinion. Coventry? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And they scored don't, three don't goals. Don't ask. <laughs> exactly. Don't ask. <laughs> um, so that was FA Cup, Manchester United, Manchester City in the other semi-final leg. They beat uh, Chelsea 1-0 in a little bit of a controversial game. But we have a Manchester derby for the FA Cup final, mm. um, which is incredible. We, we love to see that. Uh, sticking with the Football CAF Champions League semi-finals, uh, shock defeat for Sundowns in their first leg uh, game against ES Tunis. Um, their second leg will be on April 26th. Uh, Formula One, Gareth, I asked you last week, and I know you don't care oh, at all. I would, you're, it's, like, um, <laughs> it's like asking Leanne about uh, <laughs> nuclear physics. <laughs> I just have to ask you who you think won the Grand Prix this week. Do you? Max I don't even, Verstappen. There, there you go. See? Wasn't you should have asked idea. her. She well, actually knows a lot about Formula One. Oh, yeah. really? I used to watch it religiously. Well, I was a Formula One wife, not married yeah. to any of the Formula One drivers, just somebody who thought they were a Formula Listen, One driver. Listen, if you'd been married to a Formula <laughs> One driver, you would not be sitting here early on a Monday morning with us. You'd be spending it up in the French Riviera or something. Well, you, you know, I might be there now. You never know with AI. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> true. That's true. With the racetrack, yeah. <laughs> uh, so in the Formula One, Max Verstappen did indeed come first, uh, Norris in, in second, and Perez in at third. Um, and a little bit of news coming out of that Grand Prix. Ricardo, uh, Daniel Ricciardo given a three-place grid penalty for the Miami Grand Prix, mm -hmm. um, which will take place on the 5th of May. Then lastly... Wait, why was he given the penalty? Um, Again, Plax, don't <laughs> ask. Okay, okay. You're asking, you shall We're receive, not going and it's details. not what you want. <laughs> Trust me. Um, it's because he was overtaking Nico Hülkenberg during the safety car. in the oh, uh, not, not allowed. Not allowed at all. Bad, bad news. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, with the rugby, the URC, uh, the Bulls and the Stormers dropped the bag with two significant home losses over the weekend. Bulls took on Munster. They lost 22-27. Uh, and then the Stormers took on Ospreys. They lost 21-27. However, the Lions produced a glorious result, uh, beating table-topping Leinster 44-12, which is huge. Um, and that is the sport hmm. news. Very Not good. great. No, Precise. that's no. You know what? Precise. That was fine. You, you, not you bad let at all. me. You let me judge it, and you just go back to doing whatever it is you do. I'm going to go to my room in the corner. No, that's what I'm going to. Very like good. Highlight um, reel. <laughs> absolutely a highlight reel. Uh, just really results. I mean, you could probably look this up, and you'd have a better experience than asking James. But anyway, <laughs> there it is, and it is brought to you by Superbets, who support responsible gambling. Strictly no under 18s, winners know where to stop. The South African Responsible Gambling Toll-Free Counseling Hotline is 0800-006-008. We are here to look after you this morning, keep your morning going, help you with some news, fill you in on some stuff. Uh, at the same time, 
catch up with uh, Flax, who's back in the studio after getting married. And we've got loads of other good stuff to talk about. All of that and more on the way. No Dr. Hanan today, by the way. We're still getting some parts of the technology together. Mm. Soon he'll appear on the screen behind us. Oh, lovely. And you'll be able to hear him giving all his useful psychological over advice shoulders. over our shoulders. The way we need it with a, with a good shrink every morning. <laughs> but we'll be skipping that this morning. So you don't have to stress about him. Um, okay, so Flex, another yes. thing that's happening with you is uh, you're busy preparing for Pesach tonight, which yeah. is the Passover. Another thing I used ChatGPT for last night, I created, I swear you to God. You had to look up what Pesach it, was? No, like in three <laughs> minutes, I made it make me like an entire dialogue of the prayers, oh. then explanation on the prayers, and then the prayer, right. like so understood you're gonna, my you're market. Gonna seem, <laughs> you're going to seem like you're a real Jew. Like I've researched this for years. <laughs> like tonight you'll be the real thing. I swear to God, in three minutes last night, it did exactly what I asked it for. Rabbi, See, Rabbi Flax. Exactly. I, I, I understand your position. So um, I write um, speeches and even corporate copy, corporate or speeches. Or Panyaza Sufi. And no, for, oh. the, for the Jewish community, right? Oh, really? Oh, yes, my God. I do. I write yeah. bat batty speeches. Why don't you tell us? All, all speeches. That is a niche sort of It's very niche, field. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, I took over from a friend of mine who um, uh, had a stroke, and she had, through her life, Did built she have, up. have a stroke from all the, like... No, I do it again. And I, I, no, I don't like that. Take this out. Put that in. You know how Listen, the Jews are, right? Difficult right, to right. please. I'll tell you what, huh? with high standards. But um, I've had to juggle everything here. <laughs> My gosh. And so, so, yeah, I understand where you are. A lot of it is fascinating. Though. Oh, yes. I mean, really. Mm. So I, I'm pleased to hear that you, you also use these because everybody expects you to just know stuff. Mm. No, you can't right. know everything. And you've got to be able to. I mean, let's remember, we're dealing with about 5,000 years of history here. True, true. So no one's going to get it right all the time. But um, it's funny, we've got all of these holidays around the same time. I know Eid was just the other day. I know that uh, most Christians celebrated Easter mm -hmm. just mm. a little while ago. But the, the Greek Easter, the, the Russian Orthodox and Greek Orthodox Easter is now, I think. Mm. Um, so it all, it's, They're it's all very pretty complicated. Close yeah, yeah, what, what, the, what do they do to celebrate? What do you mean? The in Greek, the Greek. Easter. So they, they also have they, they have much older traditions, funnily enough, than the ones in, in Western, more Catholic uh, Christian mm. way of doing things. But you would have to ask them. Uh, I haven't I haven't really got into it because uh, no one's ever really uh, invited me to it. <laughs> I'd be interested. If I, I know like more about Pesach, Flex, special than I food do or about something. Greek Orthodox <laughs> um, Easter. All right. So a couple of other things that we need to get to this morning. I see lots of people talking politics. Obviously, we've got the election coming up. Who do you think is advertising the best? I got into an Uber discussion. I flew back yesterday from Cape Town, and I was in Uber with uh, one guy who was like, look at all these ads. Do you think they're going to make a difference? Do you, yeah. do you think so? I mean, you see some pretty big billboards uh, on the highway. I see they're the all town. suddenly spending up a storm. Mm. Well, uh, the only reason I'm grateful to see them is because I'm, I'm seeing parties that I didn't know about before. <laughs> so that's quite interesting. And I'll end up looking them up. But as for the rest of it, there's nothing more that the A or less that the ANC could do to convince me otherwise, or that the DA could do or the EFF. No, so they're wasting no their money on you, help. on your, your, your particular target market. I mean, the target 100%. market of one, they're not going to persuade you with advertising. No. Not at all. Have you seen anything that made you think, wow, okay, that's quite clever? Um, no, it's all boring. I mean, even Musi Maimane, who's gone out there now this week with um, his campaign, is like, a job in every home. Yes, You're like, all that, yeah. Really? You don't think people already have enough to worry about? Now you want to put another job in every home? I know what he means, but, mm. you know, sarcastically. Um, I see also the, um, the, the, uh, the, the Freiheitsfront Plus and the EFF are both contesting quite hotly along the highway. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about like disparate parties. That's how you know. By the way, if anyone's feeling sad and sorry for themselves and they think this country's in big trouble and we're a terrible example of democracy, the fact that you can have within the space of like five minutes on the highway a big EFF poster and then a big Freitz Front Plus poster, we're okay. And they all have to come down soon. 
Oh, that's going to be a Isn't nightmare. Isn't it a month before elections? They all have to no, come down. No, no, no. They, they can after. come down after. Yeah. But, they, oh. but in fact, they have to. But you know there's going to be so much trash mm. lying around. Yeah, and last time, I, I seem to remember the EFF were the last to withdraw their, their posters. And you they, you get penalties for it. Oh, man. And yeah. most like street polls aren't just like EFF posters. EFF, MK, then DA, like all on top mm. of each other. It's ridiculous. Yeah, there's there's quite a lot of MK advertising. I saw some of that in, in KZN, but not so much in Joburg. That's Jacob Zuma's party, no? Oh, that's well, yes and no. Depends. Uh, so they've said he can run. He's allowed. Um, the Constitutional Court said he's allowed, but but isn't he on parole or something? No. So he he did go to jail for a while, but they decided he didn't go long enough. And by par- but not by pardoning, but by commuting his sentence. Cyril Ramaphosa effectively gave him an out uh, to, okay. to run uh, with, without any, any restrictions, which is interesting. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, again, everybody's talking about that as the unknown part of what we're going into because they, they couldn't have factored this in. Oh, God. Oh, goodness me. A bit of an early start <laughs> this morning. You, I, do wanna say, I do want to <laughs> say this, though. Um, Hey, at least it was the burp or a fart. You know? <laughs> well, this is why I'm laughing because I identify. <laughs> yeah. um, interesting, that same Uber driver. And I'll tell you what, you learn a lot by talking to Uber drivers. True. Yeah. You learn way more than you would from some political analyst on TV. Those people are a dime a dozen on TV and they mostly get it wrong. Yeah. I reckon the Uber drivers get it right more than the, those uh, analysts do. This one said to me uh, yesterday that he reckons MK, EFF, they're just a different version of the ANC. They're going to vote with the ANC anyway. What do you mean vote with the ANC? So if for every vote that you give to the EFF or to MK, you're actually just giving it to the ANC. This is what this guy said. Mm-hmm. He said it's all the same thing. They all come from the same crooked... Oh, you're saying the background doesn't yeah, matter yeah, who's yeah. in... And th- this is not important. Like It makes mm-hmm. no difference. Uh, whether you vote ANC, MK, EFF, all goes into the same pool. Ooh. I don't know if I agree, but I think it's an interesting point of view. Maybe he's like trying to say who's going to create more change, and then he's saying neither nor. Like, it doesn't matter who you vote well, for. Well, he, he says that all of these people, they, th- those three in particular, those parties, are all just looking to steal. Mm. Uh, Tracy says the EFF is pushing hard in Pumalanga and Limpompom. Limpompom. Limpompo. Uh, we've entered the Kruger via Zanin and left wi- via White River. And EFF posters there are huge. Uh, I'm true. off there next month. I was there last week. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And I know uh, that's where you see the, the, the biggest uh, EFF engagement. But you've always been a big EFF supporter. I yeah. always have, yeah, Gareth. That's true. <laughs> All right. Uh, stop the suffering. Vote good. Vote Auntie Pat. <laughs> what a cuck poster. What's good? <laughs> exactly. What's good? You may well ask. <laughs> no, th- uh, so good is Patricia DeLille's party. We interviewed a guy called, what was his name? Brent or Brett or something not so long ago. He's like their second in command. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, called good. Good. Ooh, have good not party. seen a single poster. No, they're it's in the cave. Uh, yeah. uh, uh. um, but they actually do on the poster say Auntie Pat. Mm. <laughs> Vote for Auntie Pat. But there's a picture of Patricia DeLille going... <laughs> Great. Yeah, that's your that's your angle, guys. Lovely. Uh, independent journalists have way more sway, on my opinion, than any billboard or KFC mash and gravy. Ooh, did you see there's a massive fight online? People were having a go at each other, saying, oh, the ANC just buys votes by giving people KFC. Are they doing that? They are. And then there was someone who said, oh, well, you know, if the ANC is buying KFC, that must be because they're racist. I was like, what? You're jumping uh, at that chicken. Yeah, yeah. You know, so suddenly anyone Buy who buys chicken. chicken, yeah, mm. oh, you know, these uh, black people, it's easy to just buy them off with some chicken. There was massive fighting online. Don't ask me who was involved. I scrolled right by. Mm, None of my business. By. I'm not getting <laughs> I'm not getting involved in that. Um, Indy L says, I agree. If Zuma really wanted to go his own way, he would have resigned from the ANC. No, he just wants to be a kingmaker and force his changes in the ANC and form a coalition with him. I don't know. But I did have an interesting conversation on Saturday night with Vinnie Lingham. Yes. Who you know is a, uh, a tech bro. Uh, he lives in San yes. Diego now. Tremendously successful guy. He's made millions and millions in dollars. 
and he is still very proudly South African, still very involved here. You may remember Vinny from the Shark Tank. Mm, and he's been on your show a couple he's times. He's been yeah. on the show a couple of times. He's a great guy. I, I consider him a friend. He's super smart. Mm. Um, he was talking about how, how much hate he was getting for the Bitcoin halvening, which happened or halving that happened uh, over the weekend. Some people were very, very upset with him because he said he reckons Bitcoin might actually, might actually go down. Hmm. Jeez. And then people lost their shit with him. Anyway, he has an interesting take on the U.S. elections. I'm not going to get this exactly right because he explained it in a hurry. But effectively, he's backing Bobby Kennedy. Um, who's the third party candidate? And Do you the know reason my, my uncle's name is Bobby Kennedy. He's I Robert know. Kennedy. Mad. I know, and you're actually related to those Kennedys yeah, or something. Yeah, he's related. Yeah, to I'm them. just I'm surprised you're still alive. That's all. <laughs> Kennedys do not have an easy time. Yeah. So, what Vinny said, in in very garbled short order, is that effectively, if neither Trump nor Biden gets enough electoral college votes in this upcoming election. In other words, both of them fall short. Then apparently the vote goes to the House, the, the House of Representatives. Mm. They will vote. And because they'll never get a compromise between Biden and Trump there, many of them will vote for Robert Kennedy Jr. He could find his way to the White House. Or, or the Speaker of the House ends up as president, which is another interesting outcome, which is possible. Either way, this is some arcane bit of like how... American politics works, which Vinny, because he's so into this stuff and he's so smart, he looked up. Now, whether or not that's possible, I have yet to discover for myself. Sounds bloody interesting, though, yeah. and could lead to a very, very much unforeseen result. Well, I mean, it, it could lead to a, a win in most people's minds because most people don't think either should be up there. Yeah. Well, when I say most people, I mean people not in America. <laughs> Well, we'll see. I mean, I, 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 don't think, um, I don't think that this race is over, just like I don't think our race is over. Everybody always says to me, like, I'm some kind of, uh, I have info they don't, that, oh, what's going to happen in the election? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm interviewing as many people as I can, getting as many views as I can, but I still don't know the answer. It would, <sighs> would be an interesting outcome. It's like an accidental president. Imagine. Mm. You voted I mean, for I think two, it could be and great, because right? of that, they were equal. So accidentally, this third oak wins. Like, it's weird. It I could be. I, I think it could be a very interesting compromise. Might just make things very exciting. Mm. I mean, as if it isn't exciting enough. Um, and then I like the live debates. Have we ever had one of those in past election years? So are, are you talking about live debates in South Africa or are you talking about in America? I've seen, it, I've seen some uh, being hosted. I think it was from the universities in South Africa. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's like with the big political party guys like the main leaders i think it's more like the junior councils etc hmm. yeah i don't know i don't know so jp give us some detail uh ass you've got a thing you wanted to talk to us about oh yeah um, i do yeah you did <laughs> so I, d I also saw this on social media over the weekend i'm not sure whether it uh, only broke now or whether it's an ongoing story that people are just getting uppity about suddenly but the Department of Higher Education has confirmed that Selo Makekangube, he has a PhD from a bogus college. I mean, there's this. Ooh. Uh, put the picture up, uh, James. Show everybody. There's a picture that uh, they say we've got here as well mm. of him, him being, you know, uh, awarded his doctorate, I think it is, an honorary doctorate or something. Yeah, honorary doctorate. From, but it's some, some bogus college. And like poor old Selo. I mean, if you invite me, I'll take a bogus doctorate. From, won't you? Oh, wait. Are you saying he didn't know it was a bogus one? He didn't one? know it was a bogus oh. college. I mean, it's not See, a bogus doctorate. It's a bogus college. They don't have the right to give out degrees, according to the Department of Higher Education. No. So um, it's actually Bladen Zimande, who's the Minister of Higher Education. Well, well, to my mind, I mean, he calls himself Dr. Bladen Zimande, yeah, exactly. too. I wouldn't let him operate on my spleen, which means he <laughs> must be a PhD doctor, and I want to know how he got that. It's the, surprise, surprise, Trinity International Bible University. Oh, that sounds <laughs> But this legit. is not the first time they've done this. They've handed out a few. Um, I but might they, already have one. I'll go and check when yeah, I get you home. Signed check. by God. Just go through your <laughs> book of certificates. Yeah, signed by God. <laughs> well done. You are now a doctor of God. <laughs> um, but yes, this is not a registered private higher education institution. And uh, 
people had flocked to social media to celebrate um, with Mike and he's um, standing there proudly with his wife. I mean, I feel for that. Poor him. She's, like, uh, he's not the idiot in this situation, right? He no, looks like But he idiot. should know better. Uh, it, it's I, like, I mean, wouldn't you look it up? Wouldn't guys, you? Oh, do not look a gift horse in the mouth. <laughs> if someone offers you a free doctorate and you've done nothing to earn it, but they say, well, it's because of your contribution to acting. I mean, that happens in countries all over the world. Mm -hmm. Legitimate universities give out honorary degrees all the time. And there are legitimate ones in this country who do that. It's not, what are you going to go and prod around and... Thanks, guys. Yeah, I'd really like this, but I first want to check if you're legit. That's a bit rude. It's like someone gives you a birthday present and you're like shaking the box to see whether <laughs> it breaks or how heavy it is. Yeah, it does I happen. don't know. I think it's these guys, the, the, the college. What are they called? Trinity what? Biblical College. Trinity Just, uh, International yeah. Bible University. They've been written to before and asked to, to cease doing this because they're not registered. Um, but he's not the only celebrity to have been honored by them. Um, in 2021, businesswoman and football club owner Sean Mackie, uh, Mamikize. Mm. <laughs> oh, right. You're good at this. Yeah. <laughs> I usually am. Maybe you just had Sean a... Sean Kize was also conferred an honorary doctorate by okay. the uh, Bogus Institution. Um, and, you know, these, these come with big celebration parties. They invite lots of people, balloons. The sure, sashes. I mean, everybody's there. They clap and cheer and you invite. Obviously, you'd invite your family if you're going to get a mm. doctorate, even if it's an honorary one. I think that's a that's a great. Like, I think it's really uh, nice that we have institutions that honor people for their contribution to society with honorary doctorates and so on. But they've got to be legit institutions. And I, I also have to be straight up about this. Like, even if you are a bogus institution, you can still give out honorary doctorates. It's not as if you're qualifying anyone in anything. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, there's that. I mean, I don't, think, I don't think you should be using the title doctor if you have an honorary doctorate. Yeah. Mm. Honorary doctorates are purely like, uh, it's an accolade. But in my mind, should it not um, represent the fact that you probably, even though you haven't studied for that doctorate, would pass that, that test? Well, you have enough experience yeah. in, in whatever you're so, doing. So what was his doctorate in? Do we know? No, we don't know. Biblical studies. <laughs> <laughs> it, must been, he, yeah. it must have been for acting. So probably okay, for so, theater so, and acting. Or so something in acting, like that. look, I mean, then it makes sense. And your, your point of view is right. Like Selo uh, he's he's like a, he's like a, he's one of South Africa's most um, incredible um He's 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 a hugely successful mm. and, and an accomplished man. He doesn't need the doctorate, but the doctorate is kind of saying, well, if we were to be lectured by anyone in acting, it would be this guy. Yeah, he mm. would right. know. But I still don't think that like, Bladen Zimande gets to decide. Really, well, it's the entire department, really. You but, know, but under him, Department of Higher Education, really the guys who keep screwing up everything, Nispas. Uh, Academic records, uh, universities. Yeah, if, you uh, see, if they aren't reg regulating their own shit. They're not. <laughs> they, they don't even keep their own house tidy. Yeah. Why do I care whether Blade recognizes Selo's a degree? I, I'm not interested in Blade and whether or not he thinks a degree is worthwhile or not. He wouldn't know a good degree if it jumped out of his Rice Krispies and bit him on his tits this morning. <laughs> so thank you, Blade and Zimande. We don't need your say-so. Uh, I'm going to go with, next time I see Cello, I'm going to say, hey, Dr. Cello. <laughs> and I think he'll like that. Is, that. is that like, is that right? Is that the thing to do, to give free degrees? Just because people have been it in that field for all, so long. It happens all over the world. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's a standard practice. Imagine someone told you that Meryl Streep had never studied acting. And then wouldn't you say that she's deserved of a PhD in acting? I so, wouldn't. I wouldn't say she's deserving of like a PhD. I'd say accolades in like the form of recognition on the trophy things that they do, like mm. the award shows. But I wouldn't say she de deserves a degree in this or like deserves to be put on the same title as someone that studied out the books for years, if that makes sense. Mm. I don't think, I think this is all part of a much bigger discussion we need to have about what degrees actually are for. Mm. Yeah.
Like there's a really serious conversation we need to have in South Africa. And we've been selling young people on the idea that if you just get that degree, mm. True. you'll be able to make a living. There are no jobs, number one. There are one. no jobs. Number two. Some you know, degrees are useless. Yeah. Right? Some degrees True. are completely. Like you could get a, a BA or a BCom in certain fields and it's not going to get you any kind of practical mm. use in the world. The other thing is the relevancy. I mean, if you look at what I studied, one of the first things I learned in <laughs> You in study studying you, oh. a, a BA uh, communications okay. with um, integrated marketing communications, journalism. All right, that's, I've already fallen asleep. Right. Carry on, as you were. Uh, anyway, we were, we were taught on analog journalism. So, you know, it's not even relevant anymore. Did you get telex press releases from <laughs> Saab? <laughs> <laughs> no, but we learned about double spacing. Did you get like SOS from like World War II um, women in, <laughs> in tunnels? <laughs> no. <laughs> <Morse code>. <laughs> <laughs> the, the most embarrassing thing is that we, we edited reel to reel, but that we did, you would have done as well. Oh. No. <laughs> those those I people saw don't reel know to reel. What's reel to reel? Reels of tape. Big reels of audio you know, like tape. Like cinema oh. tape, but it's audio. Oh. oh, and you'd, you'd edit have to, that. You'd, yeah. have, to, so you you'd have to splice, find you'd have oh to man. splice little bits of content together for your news bulletin. Looks like I'm DJing, but I'm no. I'm not. Mad. But you'd have to find the part where he says stop. And you'd have to do this live for radio. You'd literally cut it with a pair of scissors. Jeez. And then splice with sticky tape and then replay it through your ears again. If we wanted to put in sound effects, we had things like a record player would be ready with a lion's roar. And then an <laughs> it's a real to real would be ready with the creaking door. And you'd have to run around the studio and hit the creak and hit the lion's roar and hit the sheets <laughs> all long. Yeah, yeah. That was that was insane. Yeah, uh, Leanne also worked on uh, the original patent for Edison's phonograph <laughs> <laughs> back in the day. Um, so, so yeah. Had a, had a little lamb, it's the least was white as snow. Didn't you help him record that? <laughs> Yeah, you did. absolutely. With tin cans. Anyway, your point was. The point is, is that the, some you want of these a degree degrees for aren't <laughs> even. You want a degree for doing that. I <laughs> get it. Hurt. This is the whole point, everybody. Leanne just wants a degree in sound engineering because she ran around a studio splicing tape together and hitting lion sound effects. If we have a printer, we can give you one. I still. Listen, <laughs> that's the point. You can print a degree and you can say you have it. And people in this country are obsessed with degrees, mm. but they don't help you if they don't get you a job or they don't have any practical use. You could be the smartest person in applied mathematics. You could be. You may have no degree at all. You may be self-taught. You may sit at home and solve theorems and, 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 and complex calculus and all kinds of interesting stuff, and nobody cares. Yeah. The reality is you have to have some practical use for the stuff. What we've started to do is value that piece of paper more than the people who are studying it and more than the people who are lecturing in it and more than the use that it has, the practical application in mm -hmm. the world. And uh, the minute that becomes dissociated, the degree is worthless. Yeah. Trust me, in this country, we're dealing with a lot more than bogus institutions. We're dealing with people who actually hire other people based on a degree when they have no ability to do the job. I would rather hire somebody based on two interviews, mm. even uh, one interview, than I would based on what their paper degree true. says they've done. I mean, come on. I mean, turning now, out these students a dime a dozen. How many more law students do we need? Now people are getting two degrees, okay, because no. one's not good enough. Right, Masters, So because everyone's right. getting a degree, now there are people who are in a position to getting two degrees and still what i'm seeing all that this is prepping you for is hard work working long hours uh de dedication commitment seeing a project to the end is it giving you um insight and knowledge into the the, the field that you're going into no mm -mm. not usually we've got to take a break um but this i think we've really hit on a nerve because there are parents in south africa who are putting their entire life on the line there are moms who are domestic workers mm. who are trying to put their kid through varsity because they want that that child of theirs sometimes there's only one kid in each family who gets to do this to end up with the degree and you got to ask yourself whether it's worth it or not obviously any education is better than no education but when the department of basic in south africa and higher education both of which are basic if you ask me start telling people that they are the ones the arbiter the final decider between what's good and what isn't and what's quality and what isn't 
and both those departments are run by people who I wouldn't want to manage my shopping list for Thursday, <laughs> you got to ask yourself where the real value is. What is the store of value? Is it someone's aptitude? Is it someone's desire to learn? Is it someone's willingness to work hard? I mean, those things matter far more than a degree should. Anyway, we'll end on that note. We'll be back in just a minute. We're taking a break. The Real Network, good morning. We are live. live this is the real network and our brand new look and feel which we're going to be improving on in the coming few days it's very very exciting uh, there's a lot happening we're testing out some brand new state-of-the-art cutting-edge technology here this morning not just saying that I think we're the only live show in the world that is using both green screen and unreal engine technology this morning um, the kind of stuff they used to make movies. So who knows? It'll get better. I'm just sorry that I still look the same. Uh, what can we do? We can't make miracles. I mean, I could, ju I could just wear the whole green screen suit and disappear into the background and just be a voice. It might be better for ratings, right? Well, video killed the radio star. Right. Leanne Moll's here. Michael Flax is here. And we have got lots to get to this morning. Lots of comments, too. You can drop us a comment, a like, and a subscription in the YouTubes. Go and uh, sign up today if you haven't already for uh, a, a regular update on what we're doing here. And there's lots of really exciting stuff on the horizon, too. So we were talking uh, very seriously about qualifications earlier, about Selo Maike Kangube, who uh, got a doctorate from somewhere. Turns out it was a bogus college. But then, aren't these dime a dozen? They also spring up everywhere. We had a big discussion about what the actual value of a degree is. We didn't come to any real resolution. But that's not our job. That's yours. 
<laughs> and I'm not a higher education institution, so <laughs> right. I mean, there, there is one the comment is, here. Wayne does say, I'd prefer my doctor to be legally qualified. Yeah, or my pilot. Or and the civil engineer that's making the stroke. But yes, the, absolutely. There's some degrees, the practical ones in particular, that you don't want to take chances with. But then at the end of the day, you're picking your doctor and like your pilot and all of that just based off a, they got the degree. I mean, your doctor could have got 50% where my doctor could have got 100 you and we know. would never know. Yeah. But you don't pass, you don't become a doctor. with. Although 50%. if someone says to you like, true, but if, you can if you just pass. If someone said to mm. you, listen, don't go to that doctor, they really but are again, a butcher. Uh, okay, mm. I was um, top five students in journalism. Look at you just talking about yourself I know, and all your but qualifications this, is my point. this morning. <laughs> but really, this is, I'm, you, I'm highlighting just, how underqualified I am. You're angling for an honorary doctorate. That's what you are. And I was top 10 <laughs> students. We're about to give it to you. Top 10 <laughs> students in communications. Up. Are you telling me that I then became one of the top five journalists in South Africa? No, I definitely didn't. not. So people are, are seeing these amazing results and I'm, I'm top this and I'm top yeah. that. It doesn't translate to anything. You may be a hundred a one hundred percent doctor on paper, but the sixty percent doctor might be a brilliant researcher. He might be, you know, have better connections and know about more things and more discoveries. And he science. might he might be doing stuff on on the edge that yeah. you know, the others are not doing because they're much more in the center. Like a neuro in, a neurologist yeah. or a, in, um, a neurosurgeon, a neurosurgeon. Yeah. they actually need to be a little bit edgy and a bit well, on mm. the edge. It's funny that we're even talking about this because everything's linked. And my um, my friend from Dallas, who's coming to visit me this week, he's the smartest guy I know. Like in my own circle you know yeah we all know someone really really smart but they're a professor of something at some university or whatever he's the cleverest guy i know and we in varsity we both went off to the human sciences research council in pretoria because this is how nerdy we were mm. and for fun we did an iq test okay mm. and he came out with a like such an extraordinary high iq which i knew i knew, always knew he was smart mm. and we kind of wanted to just put it to bed and find out what our iqs were and he came out with such a high IQ score that they immediately said to him, where are you working? Where do you want to work? What do you want to do? Can we tell the government about you? And he was like, no, no, no. I just, I just wanted this test. I'm only interested in doing it. He's really clever. Is the test standardized worldwide, just by the way? Um, yeah, I think that there are a couple of standard IQ tests that they use all over the world, but they also have variations in those. Just like the Mensa one. Yeah, the, the Mensa one is, is quite well known, and you can get into that quite easily. I mean, you remember Damon and I went and did, Damon, my former producer, yes. and I went and did a, a test. Mensa invited us oh, right, mad. to become members, but we had to pass the test first. So you go and sit in a hall, like a, like a school exam. <laughs> and there were about, I don't know, 10 people who wanted to really get into <laughs> Mensa, right? And we all sat down and we did the test. And it's basically pattern recognition. Mm. It's testing how quickly Logic. your brain can, yeah. How quickly your brain can figure out, like, in a sequence of numbers, uh, three, six, nine, twelve. What's next? Mm. And then you, you're eighteen. Twenty-eight. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> and then uh, you know they either put you in or they don't. So I got in and Damon didn't. Mm -hmm. But I kind of knew already what my IQ had been from this test that I did with this friend of mine, Charles, and he he's coming back to South Africa this weekend, and entirely coincidentally. We've been talking to one of the cleverest people in the whole world, um, objectively one of the cleverest people in the whole world. He's heading back from the island of St. Helena um, on a trip with his wife, and we are going to be spending a bit of time with him. His name is Eric Weinstein, right? Who's a, he's a really, Chinaman. really smart guy. So he's, he's a podcaster, but his, his real background is mathematics mm. Ooh, and physics. That's a different kind of clever. Oh, yeah. So he's super super smart and he's one of the people who they they, they mentioned in the intellectual dark web which has oh, got geez. quite a lot of, of noise lately anyway eric is just he's so clever and I've, I've met him once before in november last year he was in south africa for like 24 hours and i got to spend a couple of hours with him I remember he's so clever that you kind of feel like you you need to get your shit together <laughs> before you talk to him. You know, like, if I sit down and talk to you guys and, and I talk to my family and my friends, I feel totally relaxed. I don't have to, like, aim it up or aim it down. I'm just, like, being me. Mm. 
It's very easy. You can talk about the things that interest you like we do on the show every morning. With a guy like this, I'm like, oh, I better check out rehash and, and refresh my my string theory knowledge is it and i don't have much string theory knowledge i'll assure you i assure you when i go home i don't have like books and books on string theory right and i didn't uh, study yeah. this i mean i know what they taught me on big bang theory <laughs> <laughs> but he's uh he, he's made me a bit nervous and i don't normally get nervous not that i think he's going to be intimidating or horrible but i want to be able to have meaningful conversations with the guy and not just do the same old same old because otherwise He's going to leave here bored. Do you it's worry like being about, a good host. Do you worry about what he he would think of you? Wouldn't it be no, more I, that... No, because probably, I probably won't see him again in my life. I mean, maybe I will. Maybe we'll be in contact. But probably I won't. The thing I'm going to do is put my friend Charles <laughs> and him at the same dinner table. And I'm just going to watch. Yes. <laughs> and then maybe they'll solve all the world's problems in one evening. <laughs> Or maybe they'll just never talk again and they'll also just find each other quite boring. Who knows? So you're really going to put them I'm, together? I'm doing this, yeah. That I'm is actually, so fun. And, and the, you know, the universe is aligned in which, whichever way to bring these two people who I regard very highly into one place at one time. And if I can just bear witness to this, I mean, I just mm. want to like put my mm. phone on record and just put it in front of them and just see what happens. Yeah. But there's so, there's so much. It feels... Like there are too many modules to cover, right? It feels like you need to kind of <laughs> modules. You need to have a, a a bit of a plan on what what they should speak about. Yeah, you need to start the topic, and it needs to be st uh, stimulating to both people. We know because we often host really Elon brilliant Musk last people. Week. <laughs> Elon Kennedy Musk. next week. Yeah, <laughs> I, I would love I would love to know. I mean, if anybody has any ideas of what kind of stuff we should bring up. And what I should talk to him about. I, I really am. I'm open to suggestions. You don't, you know, I don't know better than you about what Yo. to talk to someone like Eric Weinstein about. But if you have any ideas, let me know. And yes, I am aware that our app is giving us some trouble this morning. There was bound to be something uh, that was going to, to kick back this morning. So I did see a comment or two about the app not necessarily doing its job. But trust me, we're going to iron out all of this very, very soon. Um, k and says, I will laugh if Gareth Cliff's two smart friends only end up discussing Taylor Swift's yeah. new album. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the most... Um, the most talked about thing in the world right now. And biggest on Spotify ever. Like negative reviews or positive? Positive. Oh, people loving it. Yeah. Because I saw someone uh, superimpose her taking out a trash can this morning <laughs> saying... Really? Looking after her album or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not a Swifty by any means. Um, I don't even know what her top songs are. And I heard a snippet of one of them, and I wasn't, I wasn't excited. Well, I think I'll listen to it this week. I, I dig Taylor Swift. <laughs> she's phenomenal. Like, think of what in she's what She deserves an honorary degree. Suddenly, I feel like Eric Weinstein <laughs> in this conversation. I'm, like, not interested. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know. No, I, it, it, there, there is nothing in the world that uh, would make me go into more of a conversation than I haven't this morning with you two on Taylor <laughs> Swift. <laughs> I've tried this. I have nothing to say. I don't think she's the most dangerous person in the world. I don't think she's offensive. She's very dangerous. Think of her influence on the younger generation. She's dangerous, though, Flax. Do you think she could, like, <laughs> cause trouble? Put it this way. If she said everyone meet up at this location at this time, <laughs> half of the population would be there for no reason. <laughs> but because Taylor Swift <laughs> said so. <laughs> Well, it would be a great time to wipe them all out <laughs> because if you're dumb enough to just go somewhere because a pop star tells you to, I don't really want to know much more about you. I've, I've heard all I need to know. All right. Well, we'll see. Um, who is the swift chick, says Steve. Quite right. Good question. Uh, ask Eric about his Epstein experience. Okay. So, yeah. What? Um, why, <laughs> so, Eric Weinstein has, has met Jeffrey Epstein. Like in the... Yes. Good old days. In the, well, he didn't go to the island. <laughs> okay. Okay, but he had a meeting with about him. the townhouse. Epstein <laughs> wanted to meet him. Okay. Because, you know, he likes meeting these smart he likes people. surrounding himself. Remember, he had yeah. invited Stephen Hawking, who mm. can't fucking walk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he invited him to the island, right? Yeah. So, anyway, I'll ask him about that. That's a very yeah. good question. Ooh. Yeah. All right. Uh, apparently, have you heard the little girls singing Taylor's lyrics in the shops? No. 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 Is that what's happening? 
No, I, I no. I heard the radio in Spa yesterday. Is That's that, how I you heard, heard about a TikTok lot on yeah. the radio in Spa you, yesterday. That great were, radio. How long, <laughs> long were you, you in Spa? Yeah. Oh, guys, I was doing pace like shopping. Hey, eh? you got to oh, compare okay. prices. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, we'll see. Um, all right. So there are a couple of other things that we need to get to this morning. Um, chief among them, ketamine is destroying young people's bladders now. Okay, ketamine is a drug which they use, uh, you know, they'll, they'll use it as, as a therapy drug. Yeah. But it also is used, obviously, recreationally by some people. That's it. Very dangerous. Uh, it's like a horse tranquilizer, as I understand. Um, it's, not, it's not a play-play drug. Look, yeah, but like there you are, say, it can be a party drug. So I suppose it depends on. I mean, there are there are clinics. There, there are there are clinics in South Africa that you can go for ketamine treatment, I've and they heard about 100%. this. They help people with PTSD, S severe depression, severe depression. They help people to clear their mind if they if they feel like they're a bit stuck. Yeah, there are all kinds of reasons to do it, but that's under, you know, intense medical supervision. Supervision. Doctors are around. They they monitor your blood pressure. They make sure that you you know don't do too much. Don't do too little. Just the right thing. You need mm. a dosage and all that kind of thing. But you're telling me that young people are developing other problems as a result. There's so much ketamine out there that they're developing other problems? Yeah, hugely. So, yes, correctly, a lot of people use it for, you know, severe depression. Um, Elon Musk has admitted to using ketamine. Yeah. He, he admits to using then. it. Uh, he, he admits to using it quite a lot. Um, but he, he has other issues as well, which he's being medicated for. But apparently what's happening is it's giving younger people who are using it as a recreational drug mostly bladder issues, hugely huge bladder issues, um, including incontinence, frequent needing or frequent need to urinate. Some people can't go as long as 30 minutes without needing to go to the loo. And these are 20 year olds. Rochelle says, by the way, half the people I know were spiked with it. In 2022 in Edinburgh, including me, it was bad here for a while. Mm. What? It's like everywhere by the sound of things. What, this does not sound good. What does it do to you, though, like if you're using it as a drug? Okay, so... It's the one that I haven't tried, so I don't know. Is it like ecstasy or... So you, you go on a trip, but you... you um, if you've got... You see, I, I suppose this is true for any drug. If you've got severe trauma and, uh, you know, a very Depression. complicated past and you've mm -hmm. got abuse and you've got... <laughs> you know, really horrible things that happened to you, or you're dealing with something very horrible right now, and you go into any drug experience, it's going to amplify that yeah. stuff. So it's going to make it a lot more real, a lot more terrifying. Bubble to the surface. Correct. And it won't necessarily be bad in the long run, because maybe you have to deal with it. But under zero supervision and without talking to someone, it can be a very terrifying experience for mm -hmm. some people, not necessarily good in any way, right? And in fact... I think most responsible psychologists, psychiatrists, uh, counselors, everybody who has any kind of interest in your mental and spiritual well-being will probably dissuade you mm. from doing any of these things if you're not 100% yeah. It's stable. the last resort for if um, hectic depression medication is not working. That's when yeah. they'll look at ketamine. But if you think about it, it'll take you from being... Um, severely traumatized and severely depressed to somewhat normal. So imagine if someone somewhat normal well, is could, taking it. It could do. It's but taking it, you to the next but level ketamine, of But ketamine is also a hallucinogen. So you oh, will, you'll end up having a major trip. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you'll see lots of colors and you'll, uh, you'll hear voices and you'll feel like you're floating in space and you'll, you know, jump into the, the void and then you'll spin and all kinds of weird Jeez. stuff will happen. Uh, no, I mean, this is what, you know, all, all these how psychotropic uh, how do they take it? hallucinations do. Uh, I think it's an injection. Oh. I'm not entirely sure. I, I suppose that's how they would do it in the clinics, the, mm. the, where it's operating like a drip legally. But I don't know how people take it recreationally. I'm not experienced <laughs> in that respect, I'm no, afraid. I have no I'd idea. Love to, I'd love to tell you, but I mean, I've done <laughs> other stuff, but not that. So, yes, there's something called ketamine bladder syndrome or ketamine-induced psychosis. Uh, cystitis. But they just piss wildly. W what's happening <laughs> is it's damaging, ketamine damages the lining of the bladder. It actually thins it out completely. Oh. Yeah. Leading to you have to have, you have to be hospitalized for this sort of thing. So in one hospital alone in the UK there are about 30 young people in their 20s 
Uh, mm. Sorry, 60 of them, ketamine patients with bladder issues being treated in just one hospital at the moment. Destroys the lining of the bladder. Um, and the use of ketamine, interestingly enough, in the UK alone has more than doubled from seven years ago. So it really is a big thing. Um, and in a lot of these cases, these patients require reconstructive surgery to their bladders, to Good their young heavens. bladders. Can you put a fake bladder in? Yeah. Bladders uh, are a very easy no, organ. No, it's to a bag that you'll have on the outside. Oh, no, no, no. Yes. But you, I mean, you, you, they've done, uh, you know, bladder transplants and so on. It's not a complicated organ. I'm, I'm not sure about that. I know I have a family member whose bladder was removed and they had a, a bag. What is that bag called? There's a special name I heard. It's it not on. a colostomy. Colo yes. No, a colostomy oh. bag is for your asshole. Yeah, it's not. It's a, I can't it's a remember replacement now. for the, uh, the ilium duodenum and what other parts of the, the large. No, sorry, that is the small intestine, the large intestine. And interesting, interestingly enough, the stoma, which is the opening for that bag, um, is made with. Uh, if you still have your appendix, they use your appendix to make it. It's the <laughs> perfect. It's the perfect. Um, hmm. Uh, you know, human element to make something like that out of. You never go to the bathroom if you have that, right? That is your. You do body have to go to the bathroom at this. Your, it's about the same size as a, as a bladder. Oh. Uh, you have to empty it. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. I think but that's yeah, revolting. I mean, it's really, one of the most un unglamouristic parts of this ketamine so, thing. Well, okay, so here we go. L listen to this quickly. So some people are saying a proper ketamine high is really, really scary. That's what Amin says. Okay. Joking Atheist says it sounds from what you've described with all the trauma and PTSD and everything like every South African needs to be on ketamine. <laughs> Pissing like a horse is a good sign for horse medicine. <laughs> <laughs> listen to Professor Scott Galloway's recent experience with K-therapy. Um... Did Elon Musk say he used it? Yes, we've covered yes. that. You can sniff it or take it orally, says Hermi. Okay. Um, you just evaporate the liquid ampules. You're left with the powder, and that goes up your nose. So here we are, our very experienced drug-addled uh, <laughs> listener Community. audience. Yeah, these are the people, obviously, who would help us to figure out all of this stuff. And now you have expert advice from uh, these dangerous people. Excellent. <laughs> Slippery pickle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, seems like the audio is much lower than usual. Do I have an ear infection? No color. We're busy uh, sorting everything out. We're rebalancing the humors. You're actually on a ketamine trip. None of this is really <laughs> happening. The, the chakras are in motion. Yeah. None of this is really happening. Uh, Jade says, ketamine has, the medical, has medical properties if used correctly. Problem is too many highly valuable medicines are made illegal because of a bunch of people who don't know how to control themselves. Yeah, but that's true for everything. Look at all the antidepressants. Mm. You know, there are people on everything. Antihistamines, for heaven's sake. Yeah, I you mean, know? there's my um, anti-asthma drug. It, it caused my hip bones to crumble so much oh, so that I had to have one replaced. You know, with you know, all the geez. side effects of the, all the various medications you're on, it's a miracle that you were able to make it this morning. I just want to thank not you. Not a lot. I mean, I oh, here we go. <laughs> Wait, here we are. For instance, this is today's lot. It's only that? It's only this, for instance. There she is emptying out all of her drugs. <laughs> That's all. There we go. That's once a day. What are those? Do you know what they all are? Yes, of course I do. Okay. Um, this is for ADHD. Okay. What's it called? Do you know? Uh, Atentra. Hmm. Okay. It's a very high milligram dosage. Okay. So you have terrible <laughs> ADHD. Yes. Okay. Uh, this is for... I should probably be on that. This is called Altosec which also can cause your hips to crumble, <laughs> funnily enough. Does that alter your sex? No. <laughs> no. What does it do? Um, well, it might have. So you'll never get this on any other show. Here's <laughs> someone explaining all their drugs. Go on. This is for um, G-E-R-D, reflux. For good? Yes. What it's is good? Um, Gastroenterostomal mm. suffido. So what, you get? You puke up... Um, no, it's for heartburn, basically, like really bad heartburn. Yeah, oh, your stomach yeah. is producing acid, and you don't have the uh, the sphincter at the top of this. That would be Barrett bottom. syndrome, which is very popular in people with Scottish heritage, which I am. Oh. But I was tested for that. It's popular, it's is it? That. It's popular? It's popu you, you have to have it. You the have Scot to have Oh, it. you know, I went down to the pub the other day, and Morag told me she had a terrible uh, hankering for some gird. <laughs> very excited about the problems in her, in her uh, lower esophagus and near the top of her stomach. <laughs> 
She loves a little heartburn. You see, you need... Reminds you need. her of what it's like to be human. Oh, I just love it. It's like hearing the bagpipes first thing in the morning. I you do love a bit of heartburn. You need that acid to, to deal with Oh, haggis. Flare, I've scored. Oh, God, it's horrible. It burns. Oh, but it reminds me of Bannockburn. <laughs> that great Scottish battle where we defeated the English. Oh, I do love a burn. And a burn is a river in Scottish as well. You know and that. A poet, no, of. and Robert Burns. Burns. Quite right. Burns Night. <laughs> we celebrate Burns Night with haggis and whiskey. For which you need a lot of gastrointestinal gases. <laughs> that was a lot of Scottish references for five minutes of the show. Uh, Good Lord. Yeah. Uh, weed is a gateway drug, a gateway to the fridge, says Slippery Pickle. But mm. what else have you got there? Oh, you finished your... I've got... Uh, Shut up, Slippery Pickle. We're busy with a... We're, we're, we're busy being taken through someone's uh, whole life in chemicals. Um, euthyrox, which is for an underperforming thyrox, hypothyroid... Thyrox, you I mean thyroid. thyroid. Hypothyroidism. <laughs> My thyroid. Oh, my thyrox is just underperforming. <laughs> That's why I can't win at work today. It's that underperforming <laughs> thyrox. Uh, we've got bilacol for... By the call? Bilacol. Wow. Um, for... You're a disaster. You know high that. blood pressure. Okay. And then a good double dose of anti-anxiety. Sure. And those don't contraindicate? No, not at all. So basically, when you when you are treated I by hate to be your doctor, can you imagine all the um, all the insurance claims that <laughs> it's actually not that bad. The medical aides like me; they, they do. I've just had to change over from okay. to a different medical aid. Um, they've welcomed me back with open arms. No problems there. And so they cover all that medication. Most mostly yes. You know, so you've got your savings gap, and so things fall yeah. apart in about July, August. I've never understood that savings. It's like. You have the savings, which gets depleted in a day, and then you're in the self-payment gap, but you never get out of the self-payment gap. Guys, you're always just guys, paying. <laughs> this is, you just put three quarters of the people who are listening to us asleep. Uh, do Leanne's pills smell like money from being in her purse the whole time? Well, I don't have money in my purse, so no. <laughs> so I take a couple of supplements, but mm. I really hate taking pills. Do you take them all at once or yeah. two at a time? or no, just You just put them all in the hand and, yeah. and like hit them back with your glass of water? Yeah, I do. Mm. Sometimes I have a bit of a gag reflex going on. Yeah, but I don't like always. Uh, that. It always happens with me with pills. I'm not I'm not good at taking them. Some oh. people like can't do pills full stop. Yeah. They have to yeah. crush it or something strange. Mm. I, I have a friend who in. just takes them and quickly eats them. I can't. Eats <laughs> them. Yeah, just go. <laughs> choose them. Actually choose them. They're not chewable pills, but they no. chew them. Yeah, it's the only way they can get them down. You have people that will put the pill in their mouth first and like leave it on their tongue and then do the water. I can't do that. I have to do water, then pull, then another like yeah, yeah, gash yeah, yeah. of water I'm, just no, to throw I'm, it down. I, I think we have the same problem then because I don't like, I'm not good at taking these pills. And the worst is if it, the water goes past and the pill gets stuck on your tongue and then you're left with this dry pull on your tongue with it's no water. Garrett sounds exactly like Bill, Billy Connolly. Well, he's my only reference for mm -hmm. Glaswegian, I'm afraid. But, oh, my God, that Scottish stuff, that makes me so happy. Oh, yes. <laughs> that you said it was popular in Scotland and mm. for people with Scottish heritage. That's the win. You've got to get the barrets. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone explained what GERD is in the comments. They said that GERD stands for, what is it? Gastro. Gastro. Esophageal, Esophageal reflux, reflux syndrome. syndrome. Thank you very much. There we are. Yeah. All right. No glass of gin for you, for you Leanne. You know what? I was going to bring in this morning. I, I think it might have been a little preemptive, but I was going to bring in a bottle of champagne. And then I thought, no, but we haven't proven that we can do the show in the new studio yet. So <laughs> I'm going to celebrate. Yeah, Unless maybe, we know. maybe after week one or something. I think at the end of week one, yeah. we, we could possibly celebrate. All right. So Flax, married yes, life yes. going very well. I very mean, well. You know, uh, James asked you stupidly, uh, what's it like to be married earlier? <laughs> but, I mean, that's so puerile because you've only been married for a short while. But you guys have been together for a long, yeah. long time already. It's, it's, like, interesting. When, you, when you're when dating, there's, there's, like, a certain level of growth you have personally. Yeah. So, like, when we were engaged, it was still the focus was on, like, work and growing as a, as a couple, et cetera, to get married. But as soon as you get married, it's like these other levels unlock in life that you never had before. So now yeah. you start thinking about kids and how am I going to keep you the plan, house, et cetera. Right, so, so you plan everything. We know this about Yeah, yeah I love Flex. to plan. I mean, he decided, like, I'm going to get married by this age. I'm going to do this. I'm going to... So 
you brought up kids, so I don't have to feel bad about bringing it up. Have you got a plan of action here? Uh, yeah, kids are very important. Um, even before we got married, we discussed how many kids we wanted. We like to me, it, to actually both of us, it was very important to align on yeah. what you want in life. And right. the second we realized we wanted the, both the same things in life, and this was like at our very first few like dates we went on. See, Flax is dates are like board meetings <laughs> where they decide on an agenda and then they plan out their mission or how they're going to get there and these are the routes that we'll take to market and then well, it's, like, know, it's like that show out. jewish matchmaking yes yes yeah, but i i appreciate this i think this is so important and i'm not being silly i think people need clarity in life if you know yeah. what you're in for whether you're in a, a business relationship in a friendship in a in a romantic relationship or in a marriage you don't know what you're in for and then people can't get confused and unhappy with each other because you're speaking honestly about what the goals are for the future expectations so how many flaxes are we looking at uh, having uh, here how many I'd, flax children i want a big family so you want a lot yeah anywhere from like three to four max wow okay, more than four i think that's a good lot, a lot to handle uh, you're gonna have to make a lot of money to, yeah uh, <laughs> no. you know all of them need to go to school. True. All of them need, you can't leave one out of school. I've seen that happen. It's very, very bad. <laughs> you know, you, the one kid stays at home, picked on. <laughs> wash, washes the pots and pans, and the other three go to school. The kids are very expensive. Very, very expensive. expensive as hell. Okay. That's the thing, okay? I really don't mean to, to crush run, young dreams, or maybe I do. But I see a lot of this because I watch a lot of mm -hmm. dating shows or Married at First Sight or whatever. Yeah, those are great examples of like and the most dysfunctional marriages no, in the world. No, it's just so weird how young people will decide before the time even comes how many children they want. What if you can't have children? What if True. one of you can't? What if you have one child and there is a problem and they're going to need specific care for the rest of their lives and you need to stop at one? So, yeah, and then you get people who say, I want two boys and two girls. You can't decide that stuff True. unless you've got lots of money. But um, it's, it's good to see the motivation, I suppose. So Joking Atheist says, and clearly, you know, Joking Atheists either had a horrific marriage themselves or they're just quoting statistics here. 48% of all marriages end mm. in divorce. The rest end in debt. <laughs> so, well, so. All marriages end in debt, <laughs> let's be honest. So very optimistic uh, take on things from Joking Atheist. I, I just think you've got to go in also with a positive outlook. Right? I mean, you don't know. You, yeah. you, you go in going, oh, I, I like Flax's optimism. I mean, I have three, four kids. I think that's great. You got names figured out no, already? No, no. <laughs> okay, you're not planning we, that I much. I think we're talking like utopia, best case scenario. Mm. But of course, life happens along the way. No, but you, I mean, I'm just trying to figure out how, how far the planning goes. Have you, have you written down like 10 girls' names and 10 boys' names that you would like to go? No, with? no, not no. that far. <laughs> I you think we still have it. to go on a honeymoon and do those sort of things. But it's, it's more like when you think about what you want for the, your next like five, ten years, kids are definitely like in my picture. Oh, mm. for sure. Yeah. I mean, some couples will argue about like where to put the fridge in the kitchen, but they won't decide the important stuff. Like, mm. do we want kids? Do How many do we want? What religion do we want them to be brought yeah. up with? Any These are all. important. Like, what are your values? You know, mm. don't get too heavy about this, but I do think it's kind of exciting. Yeah, it's very exciting. You get to make these decisions together. Dr. Robin says, I'm voting for a single child family. Um, yeah, that's a funny thing, too. Uh, a friend of mine is, a, is an only child. And she's often told me, like, she really wishes her parents had had another kid. Yeah. Mm. And then you get the opposite. You get the people who are thrilled that they were the only child. Because they wouldn't want to have shared mom and dad's attention or all the things that they had in their life with anyone else it totally depends uh, on your yeah. point of view i i kind of had the best of both worlds because i was the only child for six years with no yeah. cousins or anything right and then your brother came along ruined well, that cousins thing. first and then oh. brother um but I don't, I don't think i've ever met somebody who said i loved being a single child i have have you yeah I've always met people who've said I always who who are single children saying I wish always wished I had siblings. What do you what do you think? I, I'm also like at the second you said I haven't met someone who's like I'm happy I was a single child. I, I also haven't. Mm. I th I think it's it's nice to have a friend like growing up. I think it's important for kids because you learn those things like sharing and you'll learn from your older sibling or younger sibling etc. Um, so Azalea has just come in with something amazing about marriage. She says, actually, statistically, and I, I will have to fact check her on this, but 
Azalea doesn't lie. Um, she says, statistically, divorce rates are down. However, lesbian couples get divorced at a higher rate than any other kind of couple, which means women are the problem. <laughs> this comes from a woman. So I'm just saying that could be true. And if it is, many men will use it I thought over and over again. I thought divorce rates were up because of COVID. So maybe they have gone down. Yeah. Uh, because you think. were stuck in the house with like your partner and <laughs> you just things bubbled to the surface. <laughs> <laughs> That's now all ancient history, right? Mm. Yeah. And we really have moved on. <laughs> and I hope we have. I don't want to ever be too... In fact, I think I'm going to try really hard to not mention COVID ever again. Just because I think it's probably a good idea. Mm. For all of us, mentally and we're going to be asked by it by the next generation about it. Yeah, but then what write, it, write like. it all down and never say it again. <laughs> yeah. uh, Mapello says, I wish I had fewer siblings. Five is too much. Oof. I also had, I, I wish I had at least one female sibling. So it's five brothers. Or yo, six yo, boys. Yo, 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 yo. That's a big family. Six boys, yeah. Maybe six. Amazing. Mm-hmm. Congrats, Flax, says Cook. Thank you. How thank exciting. You. Also important to discuss with your partner how you want to parent those kids. You might have very different methods. True. I think I think I would be more of the strict parent. You reckon? I think so. You'd be bad cop. Yeah, I think I'd be bad cop. I think definitely a good cop, bad cop situation will go out, but I think I'd be bad cop. <laughs> no, but like, I don't know. Like some the 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 generation today, I I I find hard to like resonate with and understand. Like I went into a club once. This was like two years ago, maybe. Uh, was in Cape Town. I walked into this club a lot younger. I didn't know a single word of the music they listened to. They listened to this mumble rap, which makes no sense. And then they've got these weird dance moves. That It's not like you're saying two-step. Flex, I used to say that about you uh, <laughs> like eight years ago, so just be careful. At 7 o'clock, I woke up to the fourth evolution of the Gareth Cliff Show, says Zach. Look and feel since we started with WeChat. Are you keeping this? G feels too square for me. And con- congratulations to Flex. Thank you. Listen, uh, Zach, we're figuring out a lot here. So today's like a bit of a dry run. Mm. Of a bunch of things. Um, we, brought, we brought the KY daily for this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had no <laughs> idea what would fit and what wouldn't, right? <laughs> All right. So something else that I wanted to uh, to get to this morning. It's actually something Leanne is going to tell us about. Apparently some money-saving life hacks. Because God knows things are hugely expensive. Apparently yes, petrol's going up again. Mm. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. All right. What do we got? Wait, uh, when's it going up? I don't know. They bring it every second week. <laughs> oh, Are you kidding? It's always going up. And then if it isn't that, it's everything else. Interest rates and, you know, people are, people are struggling yeah. out yes, there. It's yes. tough out there. Yeah. What do we got in terms of so, – we're always up for money-saving yeah. tips. There Let's are, go. There are a lot that I've tried before. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. But I'll be interested to know – whether you guys know about okay, let's go. these things. So firstly, especially with online buying, it's so tempting. The 72-hour mm. rule. 72-hour oh. rule means that if you want something, you wait for 72 hours before you buy it. And if you still want it after those 72 hours. True. Because sometimes it's a new sparkly thing, mm-hmm. and then you get over it, right? I, I do just that with, uh, do you guys, have you ordered Temu yet or Timu? Timu. Or, oh, Timu. No, those ads are all over the place, <laughs> Good right? Good Lord. They force you to buy. I'm on my second but order. But some of that stuff looks so cool. Have, and have, yeah. you, have you had delivery? So I did an order. It wasn't like a big value, and I bought like a whole bunch of ornaments. It was the greatest experience of my life because one – one that was like cheap things i forgot the i had ordered experience it experience of your life because it arrived Ever. and it was like <laughs> an adult lucky Newly packet. married i yeah. forgot everything that i ordered and nothing was to size what i thought was like <laughs> a ruler was like an inch and like nothing was ornaments they were basically just little figurines basically but i didn't know what to expect <laughs> it was so Hang much on, fun. did you did you order drunk no no <laughs> like I I did they just send you random I stuff? Got, I think either I got the measurements wrong or they got the measurements wrong, but one of us was confused. I saw someone got an air fryer yeah. in I South Africa. That. Yeah, yes. it was and basically. A, it was like this size. It, well, if you can see that, but what? it was like maybe a maybe tiny Temu part. is run by dwarves. <laughs> maybe it's a dwarf thing, and the, everything is s- scaled down. But Sounds it, like it. Like I didn't expect to receive my order. The fact that I just received the order, I was happy about. It came like in a week but and a half. But they screwed it up completely. I, I, you see, I can't... You don't I don't know who him. messed up. I mm. don't know if it was me or them. Well, I, I would be interested in your second order and whether it's actually the stuff you ordered 
Yeah, because I'm always very suspicious about online ordering. Mostly because when I used to do it, when I started doing it with, with like eBay, I would, mm. I would actually bid on stuff that I collect on eBay. And there was about a, an 80% chance in those days of it arriving via the post office, Jeez. which yeah. used to work. Now, of course, you couldn't trust that. No. And then they attach, you know, customs duties and mm. courier. Now, suddenly, you're not just paying the price that it says there. You're paying like twice, three times the price by the time you get it all right. Mm. I, I'm nervous now. I, I never used to be. I still will use local retailers for online Yeah, buying, absolutely. But, but not international. No, and I, I, Amazon I must just tell you, I've here, only seen bad, bad things happen with Timu. So, really? especially with the deliveries and yeah. that sort of All thing. Right. So, who knows? Timu's legit, guys, says Gavin. Okay. Big here in New Zealand and Australia. Listen, if, if someone asked me, should I order Timu or not, I'd say order. Like, my stuff arrived. <laughs> sure, it wasn't to size, but nothing's to <laughs> size anymore. By the way, what are you ordering a ruler for? No, no it like, looked like a ruler on the website. <laughs> He's saying the difference between one centimeter and yeah. what to him looked like 30 centimeters, but it had arrived at oh, a scale think, of one no, I centimeter. I think it would complete think, my shelf, and now it's like I think this is, so small. I you think have this no is idea. definitely a flex They were actually problem. for like printer's trays. Yeah, like things I thought were metal were plastic. <laughs> That's why I'm telling you, dwarves. <laughs> I think if you do your research and you read the comments, you find Oompa on, Loompas. <laughs> Little people are busy working in that factory, <laughs> and they don't get the sizes right because they don't know. Everything's too big. Oh, it's much too big. But they've, Much com too big. they've completely flooded the market. Like every ad you see on yeah. every social network, Timu. Well, it's also yeah. because Timu. you shopped with them, so now yeah. they're they're after you. What is the stupidest thing you've bought online recently? Mm. That pill box that you just brought out. No, down that's, and you that's that ancient. Online. I've had that since high school. <laughs> um, I actually, I've never had an order go wrong. Really? Yeah. You're very suspicious for someone who's never had an order go wrong. I ordered once something. I uh, I ordered one of the first robotic vacuum cleaners. Oh, sick! Um, it 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 was actually a prototype. Yeah. And you weren't allowed to get your money back because it was literally one of twenty that they had banged together in a workshop. <laughs> it was like yeah, it was one of the trial things. I still got it here, and I had to change the plugs because they were international. Yeah. Uh, it worked like a time, and I've still got it, actually. And it still works. still works, yeah. Wow. A, ro a robot, what, the, what were they called? Roomba. It's Roomba a, which was one yeah. of the first Roombas. Oh. But you had to sign something saying, I know this might not work, because it was literally an experiment. You were an early influencer. Yes, I still <laughs> yeah. found a video on, on YouTube that I made of it. You still use it? Yes, I do. Oh, it, it goes around like your house? Yeah. Paid for thing. No, it wasn't oh. paid for. I was just fascinated so having she needed one. 15 cats at, that I had at the time. Oh, uh. So uh, I got one, yeah. But uh, no, that's the only kind of weird thing. Okay. All the rest has been le uh, legit well, and good. Still a nice story about the Roomba. And, and I wonder how often you have to clear out the cat hairs. Well, a lot. A lot. Um, I haven't used it a lot recently, but... You used I haven't to. shopped on Temu, and it's still the first 10 results if I search for anything, <laughs> says Beth. Yeah. I think Temu has a court case in the U.S., says uh, Richard. Temu is just another wish, says Mapelo. Hmm? Huh? Uh... I did a Temu order, says Janine. Not bad quality and all the right size. Hmm. Yeah, if you do your research, I think you're fine. Mm. Like, they have pictures, they have reviews and things like that. I just wanted to fill up a basket and see if it arrived. That's all I wanted to find <laughs> out. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very uh, low level of expectation. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can pretty much you can get away with, like, making flax his whole life. Remember, he said it's the best, best experience, experience so of his fun. whole life. Everybody, Imagine you want to make his whole life? Send him a box of like stupid shit that doesn't fit. Imagine <laughs> like an adult lucky packet, like a big lucky packet. You have like 15 items. But listen, then you would love those things where you can buy lost packages. That oh, I'd do that any day. Weren't delivered would, or where? luggage that was lost. Oh, yeah, I'd do that. And storage rooms. You can buy full on storage. Can you? In this country? Um, no, only in the US. I'd love I think. to buy the lost bags from the airport. I'm you sure can. you can, but you, you could probably go in and buy them. You can just take They've them. They've got stores maybe. where you can buy a suitcase. Let's go after the show. Yeah. Let's just go and grab like 10 bags that look really nice. And even if they're filled with, I don't know, Dirty old underwear. underwear or whatever, you just throw it out. You got a bag. True. I can huh? do it. I think it would Let's be a it. lot of fun. Let's go. I think that's a great idea. The Roomba picks up all the pills that Leanne drops around <laughs> the house. 
<laughs> I think that some Roomba of my animals might have had, had that, those. That Roomba would have a serious mental health crisis. <laughs> yeah, it would be a Roomba with extra Zumba. Oh, that's um, great. Okay, so we were talking about ways to save money. That would be yeah. a way if you were looking for thrifted clothes. Yes, you go to the <laughs> airport and just claim <laughs> luggage that isn't yours. Um, okay, there's this... I don't know if you've ever been in the position where your friends want to go out to some fancy restaurant every weekend and you don't have the money to. Or you'd rather spend that money on something else. Mm. And you often feel stupid saying no. You still want yeah. to be part of it. Um, so this this hack is saying... Just say I'm poor. Eat your, eat your, your dinner at home <laughs> and then go out just for an appetizer or a soup or a starter or a dessert. I mean, you wouldn't get the same enjoyment though. It's still you it's better than nothing. You maybe dabble in it. Better than nothing. All right. Yeah, I, I don't think, um, you know, there's nothing you can do about peer pressure. Mm. But I think that people also have got to the stage now where they just say, uh, certainly this is my experience, they just go, I can't afford to go for dinner with all yeah. of you. Yeah, true. You're like, okay, no hard feelings. Yeah. I, I don't get upset. You get upset if someone said that to you? No. No, but I feel obliged then to say, don't worry, I'll pay for you. No, but what happens if someone, you invited them on holiday with you and they're like, sorry, I can't afford it. Would you still pay for their holiday? I might. I I'm, hate it. I'm that sort of person. If I, if I had the money, I would. I can't go, go on holiday after inviting someone and, and knowing that they're sitting at home while I'm on holiday. Yeah, true. That's horrible. Um, it wouldn't be an adult lucky packet unless you added musk sweets to your baskets, says <laughs> yeah. Joking Atheist. What's musk sweet? Oh, those pink sweets. Those pink mm. sweets. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> those ones. I just tasted those. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, that, that is such a unique like smell and it taste. Is. Mm. Yet, like there's nothing else. Little pink. Uh, those little pink things. Yeah. yeah. And yet they put it in mo in a lot of fragrances for men and women. They do. Yes. Musk. They musk do. Musk is not a big thing. Not the sweets. No. No. I mean, you don't get the musk sweet smell. <laughs> that would be very odd. You'd think you were walking behind uh, like a grandma the whole time. <laughs> Uh, I would stay away from Temu, says Jared. If you want to see how companies like this take over, have a look at the history of Tencent. They have major CCP influence and even have a large stake in Nuspass. That is true. What's CCP? Chinese Communist Party. Uh, There's a fair in Paris where you pay 10 euros and you get an unclaimed package. You could shake yes. them and feel them before you buy That's them as well. That's sick. Yeah. You'd so like, people you like guys just like a surprise. People yeah. are doing that now where they... they there's a market in, in France. I saw a family go on holiday, and at this market in France, you could buy these mystery packs, also kind of undelivered items, and they all did, and opened them up. And these adults get so excited <laughs> for this major surprise. And the funny part is that the gifts actually match the people. Oh, yeah? Which was, which was quite funny. Imagine you went to Sandton City, and there was a kiosk there where you pay 10 bucks, and they give you, you pick any random box, and you get to open it. Would you not do that? <laughs> I think I would. 100%. What a great idea for a business. Mm. There's something cool. Set that up just before Christmas. Imagine. You Send can, people <laughs> 10 bucks, you know, lucky packets. Yeah. yeah. You can control what's inside them. It's just like gambling. And sometimes it could be something really valuable. You make it 100 even. Make it 100 bucks. Sometimes it could be, uh, you know, 10 times that value. Sometimes True. it could be one rand. And the one that's 10 times the value gets sponsored, so you're still making cash. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, you got to got to do this. Yeah. This is a great business plan. <laughs> All right, what else can we do to save money? Here we are coming up with ways to spend money, but we need yeah. ways to save money. Go on. Um, so, so one of them, I, I don't know if you've ever noticed, on the shelf strips with the, with the prices mm. and the, bar the uh, barcodes, you can actually sometimes see what, so say it's a, a pack of 15 toilet rolls it'll work out what it is for each toilet roll mm -hmm. then you can compare prices a bit better oh no but listen if you've got time for it I do. who if has the time if you uh, you know there's nothing you're worse. A couponer. There's someone someone in the shop who's like and it's invariably someone who's enormous and they take up the whole aisle oh, okay. and now they're scanning 10 prices and now all you <laughs> want to do is get the bottle of orange juice behind them or something you know <laughs> yeah. honestly at that point i'll say to her i'll buy your toilet roll just get out of my way <laughs> like you would pay for someone to go for dinner? Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. get you out of the way in the <laughs> shop. Um, okay, so another thing uh, is trying out these, um, you know, store brands. Y oh, you mean yeah. like the house brands? The house yeah, brands, yeah, yeah. yeah. So instead of I mean, buying... if you think about it, how many producers or canners of tuna are there in South Africa? True. It's going to be like four. It's going to be one of those. It's going to be one of and those. And you're paying for packaging at the end of the day and marketing. Like it's the exact same product sometimes. 
Yeah, I, I, there's, there's also the argument that the, the big stores actually push the prices down mm. with the suppliers because they say, this is, you know, we're not going to take the hit when inflation is going up and people don't want to pay. So you take the hit and get cheaper and cheaper, worse quality stuff, and we'll just disguise it in our house wrapping. Mm. You, know, you got to be careful. Like Honestly, with things like fish, you got to be super careful. They're getting like fish that have been raised on like soy and <laughs> corn and shit. No, no, you don't want that. If you think you're eating salmon, it's only salmon by species. Mm. What it's been eating means it would never survive. Yeah. You know, you, 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 I think you must be picky about this stuff. If you can. You can't afford to be picky, then I suppose you must take whatever you can. But uh, with, with yeah. certain food, fruit, no, veggies, No, I mean, there's certain meat, things I won't compromise Yeah, on. I think then you'd rather just go without yeah. than buy the cheap shit. But when it comes to, like, toilet paper, if, one, if a no-name oh, brand is too you know what an the argument we had when, when I started cliff central 10 years ago and i was like we're getting one ply toilet paper Ooh. no the you women can't do that. all lost their minds they were like no 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 you're not doing that anything but that we're not compromising no. one ply that's like sandpaper yeah i had lots of complaints so i eventually really you got to you do also two you, ply. As, you've, as a woman you've got to use double do you get three plies that a thing yeah oh man oh, yeah do you oh, get four ply or stop at three <laughs> probably in hotels and start things. a four ply yeah <laughs> there's another business idea so from flax this morning ideas. he's full of business ideas it's great wow okay um uh, gyms yeah are you still signed up at a gym yeah fancy gym with all the offerings do you use them all uh no so what i did is i was i was on a a, a national like package where i could go to any of those gyms uh, yes. including the very very fancy ones where they give you your towels when you walk in oh, and wow. all that and stuff. fruit i heard well, and then i heard <laughs> and they'll, they'll polish your shoes and like press your shirt and all of that stuff and then i thought mm, i don't go to those fancy ones that much i'll downgrade it and I wonder if I've made the right decision. I mean, I do go to, I, I try to go four times a week. Mm. So I'm, I'm a good candidate for it. And I do feel like there's value, especially if you have water or load shedding and yeah. you need to use the you gym before work or after or be between meetings True. or whatever. So I think you get your value. Why do you ask? Yeah, because a lot of gyms now, a lot of uh, gyms are coming up where they're just the basics, you know, the stuff that you need in order to train. So... The, the weights, the machines. It Here's doesn't, some doesn't rocks. come with it. <laughs> just lift these heavy rocks. <laughs> There's a tire. Uh, we'll give you a five rand gym membership, but you got to just move these rocks yeah. from that corner of the prison yard to that corner of the prison yard. Here's no a, towels, but just toilet paper. From, yeah. from, uh, here's one ply. From my here's one ply toilet paper. Yeah. No, but I mean, that's, that's coming up a lot now. Is these more like no bullshit, simple gyms that don't have all the amenities that you're paying for. But that's true. Like, how many how many pieces of equipment do you actually use at a gym? I, I was probably, when I was at the gym, I was using, like, three and maxing out on that. Mm, then you just weren't doing it properly somewhere. No, it say. was, like, what I enjoyed. I enjoyed the treadmill and the yeah, bench. Yeah, so you did what you enjoyed. That's, exactly. You shouldn't just be doing what you enjoy. <laughs> otherwise, you're going to mess up certain uh, muscle groups. Anyway, we're not going to go down that street because it's going to be very complicated. But Leanne, on the comments, says... Speaking of toilet paper, three and four ply is totally normal here in Australia. Mm. What? Australians are so full of shit. Uh, <laughs> two ply is for the scullies, so thick that you could rinse it out and hang it on the line to dry. It's crazy. <laughs> wow. Really would love to. That can't be good know for the drains. No. Like. And Zach says we've started using toilet paper and wet wipes at my house for the past few months now. That mm. is a the thing. Cleanliness eh? feeling is beyond explanation. Yeah, but all of those wet wipes being flushed down the toilet. That's yeah. not good Again, for the toilet. Not good for the toilet, not good for the environment. They don't they're non biodegradable. B days are the things now. Yeah. And you actually get and talking about wanting to buy things. Yeah, you knew you knew we'd become lavatorial within yeah, of course. ten seconds of the show starting. Oh yeah, yeah. I took screenshots just yesterday off of items that I would like to buy and I'm trying the seventy two hour thing, right? Yeah. One of them is an attachment to your normal loo that makes it into a, a oh, B day. Yes. Have you seen that? Yes. So yeah, you just take this the lid and seat off, you put it down, it's got a little spout, and then put the lid and everything back on and you've adjusted it next to you. How rude. How very, very rude. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing now. People are actually saying okay. toilet paper is actually not hygienic at all. Well, I mean, in, in some cultures, they've never really liked the idea of toilet paper. Mm -hmm. They like the idea of having a, a wash, an arse spray. But yes. you'd still need toilet paper with the bidet. 
a little dab. Afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not as much. Yeah. Hmm. I always wonder if you know if there are people who are so anal, <laughs> if you'll pardon the use of the word, uh, about their cleanliness that they'll like grab a hand mirror and like check oh, their own assholes. Oh, <laughs> I know people that will like shower after using the toilet. Like they have to shower really? oh, yeah. every time. Really? Yeah. Like, You're damn unadmitted to doing that, <laughs> needing to do that. Uh, toilet paper is for savages and for the poor. Kings yes. use bidets, says Morning Shot. You see? Wow. It's a thing now. I've well, always, I mean, it always has been. I've always said when I make it in life, I will own a bidet. One mm. day I will own one of those. Like the separate so, to the toilet. So here's an interesting one. MM says you get black toilet paper. Yes, Not you do. toilet paper for blacks. No, no. Because no, you know, South no, Africans... No. You've got to be careful. <laughs> you, you know, South Africans will always find a race angle to things. But obviously, black-coloured toilet paper. Not coloured oh, toilet not paper co either. Oh, <laughs> it's not for coloureds. Uh, yeah, sorry, quite right. Oh, okay. I can't get this right. So, in other words, black toilet paper for whites, blacks, and coloureds. <laughs> <laughs> but now you've forgotten the Indians. And MM says, and for Indians... Uh, saw it at the rich fr a rich friend's house. They imported. Wow. Yeah, you I, do. I don't know. I've seen that. I don't know if For I'd what? want dark so toilet like paper. Charcoal I, the only reason I know <laughs> is because of watching these um, shows where they redo houses and things. Yeah. And it's it's quite trendy now to have a black toilet and a black basin and mm. gold uh, hardware, sanitary ware, whatever it's called. Yeah. Anyway, and now they're doing black toilet paper with like a little gold wow. sticker on it. Hmm. I wonder if that isn't the greatest note to end things on. It's like black <laughs> toilet paper this morning because we're pretty much out of time anyway. <laughs> I love it. Uh, all right. Thank you for being part of our first uh, and, and experimental show in the new studio. There's lots that's still going to change. Um, if you had any problems or you have any suggestions or you have any ideas, keep them to yourself. I don't really care. I don't want to hear from you. Um, <laughs> we, we will be working on that and a whole lot more. No, seriously, if you do want to tell us what you think, then you know how to get hold of us. Drop a comment in the comment section now. Otherwise, we are on all the social media. The Real Network this morning, live on this beautiful Monday. It's definitely starting to feel like winter, but notice we didn't pay much attention to that at all. And we don't have to, because people who talk about weather, boring people. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow, 6 a.m. Cheers.